shopping for a tree because we've got them right here. Flip City Magazine. Remember Mad Magazine? Then it went woke? Well, don't worry. Flip City has no chance of going woke. That's right. Four times a year, you'll get an actual printed magazine full of jokes, stories, comics, and more, all about today's pop culture, entertainment, and woke politics. Flip City takes terrible entertainment trends we love to hate with hilarious parodies of Lord of the Rings, Stranger Things, The Walking Dead, Star Trek, Hunters, and more. Trust me when I say there is nothing else like Flip City on the market. So subscribe today. It will be delivered in print, or you can even get it digitally if you're one of those wacky Zoomers. Either way, follow our link and sign up today, and if you put in midnight, you get an extra 10% off. Check out Flip City Magazine today. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Midnight's Edge in the Morning, the final one for the midweek of April. And joining me for uh, for uh, this uh, stream is, of course, from Canada, Mr. Paul Chato. How's it going? Good. You can tell it's very Canadian from my background. Indeed. And also joining us from uh, from the north of America, just a slightly little bit less so than Mr. Chato, is my co-host, Tom Connors. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good, Tom. Did you have a wonderful birthday yesterday, Andre? I had a busy day yesterday. Very busy. Yes, yesterday was Andre's birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. yeah. And in uh, celebration... Um, uh, what was it? HBO released Conan, Conan's uh, comedy trip around the world. Oh, I thought you yeah. meant Conan the Barbarian for a minute. There. Oh no, the real Conan. Welcome to my comedy trip. I'm going around the world. <laughs> going to see all the people. I'm going to ask them questions. Tell me, tell Conan what is best in life. <laughs> You're all wrong. It's the wrong answer. <laughs> it's it's funny you should like mention Leto that on because, the street. Um, because we we did get some. Some Conan related news I just remembered in the guise of Golden Axe. Uh, and but, also, but I... um, Frederick uh, Malmberg put out there that there might be some cool news coming up about uh, Conan as well the other day I saw. Oh, cool. Uh, I haven't spoken with him for, for a good while, so I don't know. No, yesterday I was just basically just busy with other matters all day. When When you are stupid enough that you're birthday falls in the middle of the week and uh, it's a day that's good, not a holiday so you have a ton of other pressing matters to attend not going to be much celebrating so i unfortunately didn't have much time to celebrate yesterday maybe we'll celebrate this weekend we'll see we'll see maybe we'll even do a birthday stream that uh, remains to be seen uh, in which case we have to invite mr chato because he also had a birthday this week yes yes and i think i told you my wife got my present was a bi world war one biplane ride yeah that's pretty uh, that's pretty awesome she, she she does have a pension for giving you risky rides yes she does i think <laughs> i have to take the hint <laughs> yeah well we'll see what we do about the birthday stream here over the course of the weekend we'll see what we can what we can do about that who knows i could uh, use some celebration i haven't gotten it uh so um uh so uh, yeah and um my audio is a little bit uh little bit rotten i think it's I'll clearing be, up a little bit that. now but it could be wrong. okay yeah well i'll be uh i'll be uh fixing that meanwhile uh we got a couple of member chats and uh and stuff like that stop can't you go through those while i see if i can't do anything with my audio sure all right let's do what we got here um Kicking things off, we got Dr. Long Dongler, who's been here for 29 months. Thank you for that, Dr. Long Dongler. He also sings us in a pound 99 super sticker that is probably a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't hit it already. 
Montaro has been here for 22 months. Thank you for that. And then we got Moose. M-O-O-O-S-E. I added an extra O. Sorry about that. But he added a bunch of O's to Let's Go because he's eight beers deep. Pretty early for that. Goo. We don't know. You. It could that's be you. Let's goo. 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 Yeah. Goo. Okay. That's true. It could be. Uh, and then we got uh, Callum Lyle. He says, uh, do you know how to get suspended Twitter accounts back that got banned because of DMCA? Is it worth it or should I wait? Um, Callum, I've never had this happen. I have had a DMCA claim just take down a tweet before, but I've never actually had it get me kicked off of Twitter. That'd be a first for me. I've, I've been temporarily banned for being mean to someone. Because he posted t- clips of uh, Godzilla X Kong. And then the DMCA happened. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's not good. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you on that one, uh, Callum. Mike, I don't know how long your suspension is for if it gave you a time frame. So um, either you'll have to wait it out or just try to make a new one. But I know it's not the easiest because uh, you probably have to use something like Surfshark to do so. Because otherwise they'll... Well, even if you had them done it with Surfshark, that wouldn't have helped you. You have to upload it. You're ten times worse than you were before. We can't understand you at all. Cool. So this happened first. You sound you like sound a Yeah. I was just gonna say Transformer, but that's better. <laughs> we are the Dalek. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Vengeful Dragon, the garlic expert, says, Can't believe I'm saying this. Go 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 Sony go. Uh, oh, okay, oh, I'm oh, not what? sure what this is in ref- refer- yeah, reference, reference, reference to. to? Uh, you'll have to bring me up to speed on that one. Um, but we'll bring up 14 as yeah. you can ask, ask it as you pay. That's right. No, he can actually, he, he, I talked to him in the background too, if he wants to bring it up. Yeah. Andre was a uh, botting out there. Hopefully he'll be right back. Pilgrim media wants to know, Mr. Chato. I was mo- moved by your video about yeah. comedy. You're actually just telling you, sorry. Thank you. That was um, something I've been contemplating for a while. And I'm really shocked that it's not a subject that is more widely discussed and randy brings up a point here maybe he meant goo sony goo <laughs> goody goo goo how yeah. about now <laughs> yeah now you're better thank god okay, oh my excellent. gosh i don't know what happened there but yeah you were trying to s- discuss about surf shark and the whole stuff with uh yeah no i was basically just uh, saying that if you actually upload a copyright uh copyright claimed clip Surfshark ain't gonna help you. I mean, that's for if you find something out there that you probably shouldn't be having on your computer and you don't want anyone to see what you're doing. That's when you use something like Surfshark. But it might also change your IP address. You are the one that wants to to share it with the world from an account. No VPN in the world is going to protect you from a. So there's DMCA strikes. No. Yeah, but what I was saying, Andre, is. It won't let you like start a new account from the same IP address or whatever. So if you change your IP address, it might actually let you. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not a tech head. So no, no. Okay, the DMCA strike is still gonna is still gonna take the account. Yeah, I know. He's saying about starting a new one though, and I'm yeah. saying I don't even know if it'll let him do that because well, I've known that's people that's... who have lost their accounts in the past, and because they're coming from the same IP address or the same. Um, like they're trying to use their phone again or whatever, it won't yeah. let them because it can tell they're the same person. So I was just suggesting maybe that Surfshark for, for that change for your... that it would be beneficial. Yes, but that's uh, what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you just have to start a new account. But yeah, you'd be able to get around your location with Surfshark. But but in in general, I don't know too much about the Twitter's rules right there. Ask yeah, neither do I. We can help you with yeah. that. We know less about that even probably. <laughs> Because they change the rules daily. Uh, I thought they do. Well, we know but do you know anything about what's them. going on with Sony? Because, uh, yeah, this is news to me. Everybody's saying, go, Sony, go. Uh, it's in uh, relation to Paramount. Oh, they're going after Paramount? Well, I know uh, I heard Skydance is probably out. And I know Warner's has been quiet. So interesting. Yeah, so I, I haven't had time to do a deep dive. Ugh. Deep dive is coming. That's, it's such a big topic. And it's so few views in it, but deep dive is coming. Wow, uh, that's what we think need. That'd be a good more move more for Sony. Sorry, would you say, but Paul? That's what we need is more consolidation. Oh, we're getting that anyway. We don't need it, but we're getting it. 
yeah. because Paramount, they, the, 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 the fundamentals just ain't there, that they'll be able to, to support themselves well, it's their without fault. a corporate, uh, corporate takeover. It's their fault. It is their fault. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, they had like the worst management ever because there were, they were two corporate, of course, originally they were one corporation that was split into two, which was a bad move to begin with. And then the two companies were remerged, which could have been a good idea. But unfortunately, it was the wrong people managing it. So the two joint corporations were soon worth together yeah. less than even the least valued one of the two prior ones alone. So basically, they were able to wipe out most of their value. And it's only because of the incompetent management people. It's really as simple as that. I mean, honestly, if there was a way, the entire CEO and board need to be placed on RICO charges or something for in crimes against humanity or something. It couldn't be possible to be that stupid. Because they have such properties. They have such a wealth of properties. It shouldn't oh. be humanly possible for such a corporation to, to mismanage itself that poorly. But it did. It found a way. Well, it was Sherry, no, no. The, right? What's her name? Sherry? Uh, Shari Redstone. Yeah, the, the daughter of... Uh, of Sumner Redstone. Uh, Re Sumner was quite the visionary, but... He was. The daughter... Apart not... from this splitting up the company, that, that was, uh, wasn't was the greatest of moves, especially not if you're, a, if you're a Star Trek fan, because there were some really weird splits there. Messed up Mission Impossible, messed up Star Trek, it completely... Yeah, so there were some stupid moves there but even then you had bad management that didn't understand what they had and they still have so many properties that are just sitting there rotting in storage things that they can bring out and make billions on but they don't have the brain power or people who actually understand their own catalog to do it and all of those people that for instance made star trek a billion dollar franchise are all gone no one knows what to do with it anymore. No one knows how to monetize it. Instead, they've handed it off to people who've just destroyed it. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, and of course, that's uh, that's what you get. Then you end the entire corporation. So I'm uh, against these kind of cyberpunk-style mergers into mega corporations, but uh, sadly, that's what happens when this with this level of mismanagement. Corporations can't sustain without backing from someone who actually knows what they're doing or, or at the very least, has a paycheck to bail them out. And then the question is who? And then all we can hope is that whoever it is, they, they end up actually fixing them. And then maybe at some point in the future, government intervention can break these companies up again so you get some actual competition again. Uh, instead of the oligarchy that it's rapidly becoming with just a handful of small companies running all of entertainment. But uh, for right now, it's a matter of saving Paramount altogether. So, yep. Yeah, the Paramount studio lot. I mean, I that's where Cheers was shot. I spent a lot of time at the Paramount lot. When in oh, the nice. I've uh, never been there myself. Iconic. It's just so iconic. You you walk in there and you feel like you're in Hollywood. So yeah. that's bad. Uh, at least the Hollywood as it was once upon a time. Hollywood is a very different place right now. Yep. Yep, that's for sure. Yeah. Actually, Paramount was where I was um, interviewing for a vice president job in oh. In 1989. It would be very cool if you had gotten that and see when, then you wouldn't just be a former network executive, you'd be a former studio executive yes. right now anyway. So I, wouldn't would have have been, I wouldn't have lasted been. three weeks. Well, yeah, maybe, but still, <laughs> I'm sure you could uh, create an endless amount of content from those three weeks. So that would have been Probably. something. Probably. Probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on, we have a lot of topics to discuss, so we are going to go through the remaining Super Chats so we get there. Patrick Robinson says, I watched Dracula's Daughter a few days ago. There's a new one. I'm even more excited to see Abigail now. Supposedly, Abigail is a loose remake. 
Uh, I'm not familiar with an up. Oh, yes. Yes. That's that Abigail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one looks cool. So, yeah, I'm excited to see that as well. There's been quite a few cool Dracula's Daughter movies over the years. And Abigail, yeah, that looks like a movie to look out for this year. It's gotten a good review. It's been getting good reviews. Yeah, perfect. Uh, something that is being slaughtered a little bit more, especially by the fans, as Callum Lyle points out for five Australian dollars, Transformers 1 looks like Paramount's joke on me. Uh, yeah, that's an animated now you know, movie. Now you guys know how I felt over film. Mutant Mayhem. Sorry, Andre, I didn't mean to yeah. interrupt you there. You um, yeah, no, because I saw the trailer for the animated <laughs> Transformers yeah. 1. And uh, there's two thoughts on this. One, for the old-time fans, this looks dreadful. And I'm the very first to acknowledge that. However, that being said, that movie isn't necessarily made for uh for a long for the long time fans more so than they're made for a younger audience and you know what i felt when i saw that trailer it wasn't i'm a fan and i'm disgusted by this that was maybe my no no my first thought was i can't wait to see this with my son with my 6 year old because he's going to love that movie i think and it's going to be the first Transformers project that the two of us can kind of like share together because he's not old enough for the movies. Whereas the original G1 cartoon and stuff like that, that's um, that's like 2D. That's like too old for any of the kids today who sadly have been raised on this 3D animated bullshit. And there's no other recent Transformers production. So this is kind of like the first chance that uh, that we have to 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 see something like that together. I just hope it's going to be a heck of a lot better than that stupid turtles thing. I think you got your answer with that trailer, Andre. I don't know if this would be no offense. I don't know if this would be the thing I'd want to introduce your kid to when it came to Transformers. Okay, because that was my it, issue with the trailer. Was like, look, if this was like generic Pixar movie about robots who live in the middle of the Earth and go up to the top because they're always told you're not supposed to go up there. You know, and then they, you know, chaos ensues and fun ensues when they get up there and they get superpowers and all this stuff. No problem. Have would have no problem with this movie. Looking at it as from a Transformers point of view, Lord Almighty, they have missed the boat on this one. This is like Transformers Lower Decks, Transformers it's Mutant goofy. Mayhem. It's very goofy. Too yeah. goofy. Like it, yeah. it misses the tone, right? I mean, shit. We were joking last night. You'd have been better off getting like Nicolas Cage and, uh, you know, like Christopher Walken to do the voices at this point, it would be just as hammy because it, it's oh, completely. horrible. Completely. It is horrible. Like, and, and not only that, do we really need an X Men first class version of Transformers? I mean, seriously? We don't uh, need it. I'm not saying we need it. I'm not saying. It what's with the Power choice. Rangers bullshit? Like, it's weird. No, yeah. no I, I agree. After, I'm not disputing any of that. Not this I just don't think anybody should there. share this with their children. That's child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. But from the trailer alone, it seemed mostly harmless for a, for a six year old. Again, yeah, I agree. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that it was Transformers, I wouldn't care. There was actually some of the bits of the trailer that I thought were kind of cute or whatever. But cute and Transformers shouldn't go together. Right? <laughs> like, well, sadly, that that actually is something that does go together now after certain past iteration that I would never share with my kids. So we did escape some of the more stupid yeah. things from the from the. Well, it's not the Bay Farmers is any the better. Various mini cons or the Hever, whatever the hell they were called. When they, you know, that age when they made like Inspector Gadget and the Gadget mm. and stuff. They made like some weird Transformer stuff then, which I'm very glad to have missed out on. Uh, but uh, but now this thing here looks like looks like it might have like some fun moments. So so we'll see. And then maybe hopefully this is my hope that he'll be like, oh, Transformers, cool. And then maybe I'll be able to introduce him to the uh, to the originals. I don't know if that really uh, worked for Ninja Turtles though. No, but I but uh, trying that without having seen it certainly didn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised they waited so long. So yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised they waited so long too. 
So they I may have that, that, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> not, not disputing that. Uh, continuing on on that uh, team, Callum Lyle also says, uh, and that's their origin. Optimus and Megatron did have a friendship, but Optimus was a library clerk and Megatron was a gladiator. Yeah, I believe I've uh, seen this in probably much much better comics. Right when when the movies can't even get that right. Uh, uh, Chaos Sonic says uh, for five dollars. Transformers one lost the point of the origins of the war and the fact that the T Cog was introduced to these four despite it was part of their birth. Yeah, that's a little bit too deep, Lord, for me, but I do believe you. And Callum Lyle specifies that uh, not their origin he meant, but uh, yeah, we caught your. We caught the gist of your message. And Dark King points out that the member stream has been active since April 14th. Yes, uh, we will be, uh, and it's going to stay there until we actually carry out that uh, that membership stream. It's not going anywhere until we actually have it, which should be hopefully very, very soon here. Because when we originally planned it, Tom was Tom was under the weather, and then I said quickly got under the weather as well, which were two completely unrelated events. And then we haven't been able to find a time for that membership stream since since most of the times when we do have open schedules, it's these streams. So it's a matter of finding another time, but it'll come very very soon here. And with that, let us uh, get into the business. We had a couple more today. transformer ones here. If you want to grab those. And did we? I believe that we did got you get uh, all of them. Yeah, I did get them. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, and we got one? all of these. Yes, we got them. Okay, all right. We've got them all. So we are all right. up here. Um, well, before yeah. we get too deep into that. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's... Uh, special guest here. All right. I got a thing I got to do. And I did that special for the for the funny sounding guy. Because I heard he's the boss. So you got to do something special for the boss. Here we go. Are we ready? Okay. We're ready. ready. I got to oh, do this thing. Hello? Hello? Okay. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! It's your birthday! It's your birthday! Yeah, there, there you go. go. Happy birthday, birthday, kid. Birthday, birthday, See you later. Birthday, birthday, birthday. I'm going back to bed. That was beautiful. My, was that, that was my kind of music. Yeah. Norwegian music. death metal. Um, black metal, thank you very much, <laughs> with an industrial twang to it, which is even nice. Better. Reminded me of The Covenant, which actually is one of my favorite Norwegian black metal He was bands. really excited for that when I told him that you were Norwegian. He's like, yeah. oh. And then he's like, I got something special for that. So yeah. <laughs> I saw yeah, no, it sounded a lot like the Covenant, which are pretty darn awesome. Uh and uh, yeah, no, uh like mistaken and Paul, mistaking death metal and black metal. That's kind of like Sorry. mistaking mistaking a Norwegian for a Swede. Yes. Uh, or I or apologize. a Turk for a Greek. Like there's because <laughs> the Swedes, the Swedes and the Finns have have uh, death metal. Yes. And uh, but you know what's really funny about that entire genre cuz I like it too to a degree. I don't like the uh the screaming uh in 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 incomprehensible. Yeah, that's the black metal comprehensible uh singer style. They have to at least I have to be able to understand what they're saying. But what's really funny is if you look into uh, the backgrounds of all the bands, they all come from uh orchestral uh schooling. They they all went through really heavy uh, uh, they're all musicians, like absolutely fine, <laughs> brilliant musicians who can read music. And then they decided that that black metal or death metal was the way to go. That I think is what's so funny about this genre of music in Europe. Yeah, what's so funny too is like one of the bands who are notorious for like church burnings and for killing each other and stuff like that. One of them, he decided, like, you know what, hell this, I'm done with this. And he became a classical mu musician, and he's, like, working for the opera or something <laughs> these days. Because he's really but that's their, that's their schooling. Yeah. They're all, they're, most of them are trained classical. Class yeah, they are really, really good musicians, many of them. 
like not uh, not all of them well you almost uh, kind of have to understand a lot about music structure and stuff like that to be able to play the really fast lead stuff that a lot of those guys do i mean i don't think some people realize the amount of you know work that's going into some of that stuff especially when you listen to even you know some of the more crazier stuff that's out there now yeah those yeah, guys are probably indeed. some of the only ones who are actually composing real music anymore. Well, sadly, it, it can sound kind of similar after it a does to your ear. But when you know, like what they're doing, like it's kind of comp like, I mean, it's more like for nerds to go. Yeah, that's sure. the thing is know. that um, it's the, it's a kind of music that you have to be trained in to appreciate. It's an acquired taste. Absolutely. I mean, it's not the kind of thing that like if a normie gets into it you'll you'll hear like noise for 10 seconds then you want to get the hell out of it it takes it takes some level of effort to try to get into it like uh, one uh like the the bassist in uh, in uh, mayhem uh aka necro butcher which is his uh off name has actually compared it to classical music yeah. in that mm -hmm. and a random person can't go in and out the, of the street and suddenly know anything about it. Yeah. You just hear it. Like it, it takes effort to get into it and to appreciate the finer points of it. And uh, that's when you see him, yeah, what really goes into it. And bass, bass player, player oh, 2011 ahead, okay. EFI says $4.99. Death metal cookie monster. Screaming and decent production quality. Black metal, high pitched screaming, and recorded with a can and a piece of string. That is exactly right. Um, traditional black <laughs> metal, at least Norwegian black metal, is by design meant to be recorded on as shitty equipment as possible. And Indeed. has zero production value. Right up until the movement was lost and it became maximum production value classical music with classical and uh, orchestral backgrounds and everything so yeah and then pilgrim media asks andre why so much melodic metal in scandinavia let's put a pin in this one and get back to it <laughs> later in the stream All because right. i we can do that uh, let's get into the main topics and uh, we can uh, we can uh, talk about that yeah. one later but for now let us uh, get into the main topics here and the first one this is one that dropped yesterday which was on my birthday and since i haven't had a celebration yet it's uh, it's apart from the drawings my kids made for me. It's actually the, <laughs> the best birthday present I've gotten yet. Uh, and uh, that would be this. Fallout renewed for a season two at Amazon. Uh, now, Paul, I haven't had time to see your review video yet because I just finished season one of Fallout myself. But uh, based on what you've been saying before, I can only imagine that you must be happy about these news. Yeah. I think it's really good. Um, uh, they, uh, after a rocky first episode start, they really kicked it into gear, and and they've done a fantastic job of also getting you involved in other people's stories, which is the fault. You know, one of the biggest problems with Rings of Power is that you don't care about well, you don't care about anybody. But one of the beautiful things of Lord of the Rings is how you really get into each of the little groups, Pippin and and then Frodo and 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 and, and uh, you know what what he's doing and uh, um, and you know Gandalf. What you, know, you got? You split up the teams, and you're really fascinated, uh, you know, with what each of the teams are are doing and how the story is is constructing around them. And I think uh, they've done just a fantastic job because I I love the Vault Dwellers. I'm trying to remember everybody's names, but uh, you know the mystery of the vaults is now really, really cool, and and what's happening uh, with Lucy, and uh, it, it's just I I think they've done a fantastic job of it. You know I'm, what it I'm, reminded me of with the whole vaults and the mysteries and stuff like that? Lost when it was good. Yeah. So the first season of Lost, when everyone loved Lost before they got themselves completely lost in mystery boxes and stuff like that, before it really lost its way, Lost was a fairly interesting, cool, and intriguing series. I felt the exactly same way here with uh, with the vaults. And 
to be clear, I have never played any of the games. I don't know the lore from the games or anything like that. I did some research after having seen the series, and that actually impressed me with it even more. But like just this this revelation with with the vaults, I thought that was absolutely fantastic as well. And like it was late, I needed to go to bed. But when you really got into the what's with Vault Thirty One. I was like, I can't go to sleep now. I have to see one more. I It's been such a long time where I felt I have to see another. I have to see another. I haven't had that feeling in years. This season one of Fallout is honestly the coolest, most engaging TV series I have seen for years. I'm very happy about season two. I, I, heard, I see many complaining about like commie mysteries and stuff or, or messaging in it. I think I'm going to do a video about that because here there's obviously a lot we don't know yet. I don't know the the uh, where the uh, where the official canon stands on the Kami map and stuff like that. But there was a, there's a lot to dig into there with both the historical context and and the how the corporations acted and everything like that i i don't think anyone should be jumping to conclusions about the messaging just yet though i don't blame some for 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 doing that yeah the the um the the kami reference refers to the fact that in the game the chinese were uh, instrumental in nuking the world and in this case it, sorry, spoiler alert, or maybe I should shut up. No, no. Uh, well, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, there's I, also. I won't yeah, reveal I, it, but I, I don't believe people who are freaking out about capitalists doing bad things. I'm a capitalist. We're all capitalists here, but you can't have an ironic story about capitalists overreaching uh, that makes it communist. That's really their argument, and I think they're full of shit. Yeah, so, and, uh, and and also as we see here, the, the Voltec and what they're doing, yeah, they may use terms like fiduciary duty and stuff like that, but I think that's what they're really doing is what someone else is doing who aren't necessarily pure capitalists, but uh, but there was an unholy alliance yeah. between corporations and government uh, going on there. And the moment that happens, you're no longer dealing with capitalism. The moment that a corporation starts doing uh, a nation's bidding, which is what happened here in, the, in this universe, you yeah. are in the realm of true Italian fascism. Well, and, and, and uh, during some kind of downturn, uh, uh, capitalist companies will turn to the government to get them bailed out. I mean that there's there's such nuance you can't really nail it down to one thing, but the, the people have completely misinterpreted the Vault Tech involvement, yeah. and I think it's I think it's funny, and I think it's appropriate, and I think it's exciting. absolutely. Well, and I do see where people are coming from. Alex Ashkan says people got a little bit overprotective after coming messaging in Hollywood stuff lately. Oh, and yeah, and that's completely fair. That Gunshot. is one hundred percent fair. Yeah, people are gun shy. I I, and, I I totally get it. And I also think that the messaging may be like a little bit confused because of that as well. Because there you might have like some some competing uh, competing uh, agendas, which wouldn't be the first time that you've seen this in Hollywood, where the source material has one kind of messaging, and Hollywood disagrees with it and changes uh, up a little bit. This has happened before. But we don't know enough yet about the background lore that the series is going with, uh, because we still don't know details about how the the ghoul himself went from being. This is not too much of a spoiler, but but he obviously went from being a very very pro American capitalist early in his story. Right. To when the series begins as the bombs drop. So this is literally not a spoiler. This is like the first first scene of the series. By that point in time, he is no longer a movie star. 
he has to do other kinds of jobs right. to sustain his family and himself. And he's now being accused of being a commie. And it's very, very clear to anyone watching, he isn't. No, he's not. So uh, there's there's more going on here. There's yeah. much more going on here than meets the eye. And I think I, it's too early yeah. to make that verdict. Just and yet. I think what's different between this and Lost is that Lost extended the mystery boxes for way too long. That's That was its downfall. In here in... Uh, with fallout number one yes i think you've got legitimate mystery boxes because they're impenetrable and people are trying to find out what was going on with vault 31 how come every overseer in vault 33 comes from 31 these are really clever things these are and then you've got the one guy um, norman who is trying to find that out and the thing is that what makes this show work is that you the mystery boxes are kind of closed like you, mysteries are great and the fact that um uh, the in the fallout universe you've got uh, about 120 vaults so you've got over 100 story mystery stories that can be revealed over time those are all good mystery boxes because you crack them open and then you 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 solve them fairly quickly the, the problem with the J.J. Abrams mystery box is that you've got one mystery box that lasts four seasons. I mean, this is this is his bullshit. I, and it was both because they didn't even have an answer themselves. Here, I do believe that the showrunners have uh, have a complete answer. And this, uh, and uh, let's get back to this story a little bit before we move on. See what the what they're saying in it because uh, uh, this renewal is one that uh, came came fast and furious because. The series is a big hit. The yep. story here reads, Amazon isn't putting Fallout back in the vaults. The show from Kilter Films and executive producers Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy has been renewed for season two. According to Amazon, the series debuted to stellar viewership, uh, ranking among the service's three most watched titles ever and the most watched season globally since The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. You know what? I dispute that. I think that this may have been seen even more on the Lords of the Rings, the Rings of Power. I dispute the numbers that came from that because they went to such lengths to protect it, but it's not either here or there. But, but you, you understand that they need to piggyback that failed show on the success of this one. Uh, yeah, I understand that they need to do anything Correct. to maintain the illusion Correct. that uh, the ranks of power wasn't the billion dollar loss for them that it was. Yep. that's This makes perfect sense from a marketing perspective. Yeah, indeed. Uh, moving uh, moving on with uh, with uh, the, uh, the quotes here. Uh, I li like what they're saying here. Praise be to our insanely brilliant showrunners. Uh, Geneva, Robertson, Dwaré, and Graham Wagner to our kick-ass cast, to Todd and James and all the legends at Bethesda, and to John, Vernon, and the amazing team at Amazon for their incredible support of this show. Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy of Kilter Films said in a joint statement, we can't wait to blow up the world all over again. <laughs> the showrunners added, holy shit, thank you to John Kilter, Bethesda, and Amazon for having the courage to make a show that gravely tackles all of society's most serious problems these days. Uh, cannibalism in, and pause, 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 test, jello take a cake. More to come. Uh, based on the video game, blah, 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 nobody cares. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, that's the that's the gist of it. And let's see if they say anything about when it can be expected to be released. Uh, we are thrilled, and then it concludes with, we are thrilled to announce season two after only one week out and take viewers even further into the surreal world of fallout it doesn't say anything specifically about when season two can be released at least not that i can see by just skimming the article here but i would imagine that they're going to try to rush this and that they probably are relatively far along in visualizing season two anyway 
which you can see from the way that season one ends off. This is not an open ending. They know exactly what they're doing uh, going forward. So uh, when when would you, do you think that we might be seeing season two? My guess would be late 2025, year and a half from now. Well, they're shooting it in Namibia, I believe. I, it'd be, I, well, I wonder how easy it is to, you know, to to uh, keep the production going down there. Not not that I don't think the sets are going to go. So I, yeah, it's very exciting. And you know what? Uh, something has happened suddenly where I'm enjoying stuff on streaming and TV. Suddenly, where, for instance, Parasite the Gray. I think it's called Parasite the Gray. The Korean uh, show is fantastic. Um, uh, Netflix has released, um, I think, Family Family X Spy. What's it called? Sorry, it's called um, Spy Spy X Family, which is an anime that's been done a while ago, but I've never seen it. I heard good things about it, and it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and of course, The Gentleman is getting good. Uh, Good ratings. I thought it was okay. It wasn't my favorite thing, but uh, it it is really stylish and and super entertaining. So uh, suddenly there's stuff to watch. I love a Spy X Family. It it is fantastic and Parasite. I I would recommend to anybody who yeah. likes that. Uh, Paul, do you want to get another recommendation from me? You're sure. gonna you're gonna. You're going to be shocked by this, but um, I told you before that I was uh, going to give uh, Foundation another try, right? Yes. I did. I suffered through all of Season 1, and then I saw Season 2, so now I'm fully up to date. You know what happens in Season 2? I started watching it, and I couldn't continue. It got good. Really? It got really, really engaging and good. Wow. Okay. They changed. Uh, they changed writer behind the scenes. Really? Okay. Because episode one, I thought was much better than anything they did in season, in season one. Episode uh, one of season two was far better than anything, but it didn't push me over the edge to keep watching. Yeah. No. It's. Um, I, I don't blame you because I. I had to. I like. I first gave season one a try and I gave it like two, three episodes and I couldn't stand it and I quit. But then I heard that it got better and I was so fascinated by Empire, by the genetic dynasty with having three uh, three, uh, three of the same emperors minted at different age. I thought that was such a cool game mechanic that that kept me intrigued enough to suffer through all the other boring stuff. And in season two, it actually got really, really cool. The first episode you saw, I mean, it was better than anything in season one, right? Mm -hmm. Only got better and more engaging from there. Okay. And by the end of season two, I was like, okay, we are now up to Game of Thrones level, only in space. Let's uh, see what the season three can do. But they shouldn't have called it Foundation then, because those three um, ruling clans never existed in the books. Um, no, but uh, they're getting closer to the books again now, it would appear. A little bit closer, at least. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah. Your recommendations are with, always uh, with, a, with a mule being loose. So so it's it's still not foundation from the books, but it's... Uh, how about this? It's less further away. <laughs> less further away than it was. Okay. While becoming more entertaining TV in its own right. Okay. I'll I'll dip my toe back in. So yeah. Uh all right. Uh and uh, then let's see what uh, you guys are saying about this in the chat before we move on to the next story here. Uh, because we got a couple of other uh, other super chats, which I believe uh, things to this. Pilgrim Media says, uh, "I think Fallout deserves Emmys." Yes, and I do believe that Walton Goggins now deserves to get the Emmy that he hasn't gotten before, and it's about time. And that is one thing I'm very happy about. For He's years, so Tom and myself have been going on about how. 
Walton Goggins is the best actor of this generation. I mean, we use this meme of the, yeah, I fucking knew it. That's what I fucking knew it. Oh, that's not just because uh, it's a cool meme and everything. That's because Walton Goggins is the fucking man when it comes to acting. That guy is so good. Everything he is in is elevated by his presence. And I'm so happy that uh, that uh, he, um, uh, he his profile has reached significantly with this series. The only thing I'm not happy about is that we haven't reached out to him for an interview request years ago. And you seem to be much more difficult to get a hold of now than he would have been before. He's He's the glue that holds it together. The actress who plays Lucy, Ella, um, was turned out far beyond my expectations. She I, was brilliant too. I, I don't mind the friendship between Maximus and Lucy, but I don't buy their love interest. Um, no, he needs to stick with the they, them. They're a much better match. <laughs> no, no, I, like he just came across as really personality less to me. So if there's one character who was underserved or yeah, it's Maximus who is the, the one character who like, I like if I, if I want to check my mobile, I'll do it when he's on screen. Yeah, he's a, he's a personable actor. He's inoffensive, but it just uh, but you know you can't have everything. Yeah, can't have uh, everything. Uh, and uh, then Chaos Sonic One uh, says uh, for ten dollars. My problem on Fallout Show is more of the game Fallout New Vegas. Because the original people that made the first Fallout game made New Vegas and Bethesda hate that. Hence, the, they changed the lore in the show. That could be, I don't know too much about the that. The lore hasn't been changed. It happens several dozens, hundreds. It hap the, the, the show takes place before New Vegas. So technically, they haven't screwed with the lore yet. Yeah, from what I understand, uh, they haven't done it either. But again, uh, if they really haven't done it, or if uh, the media collectively decided to pull a Warhammer and pretend that they haven't done it, that I honestly couldn't tell you. So I have to go with what the experts are saying on on that one. Yeah, I mean, as far uh, as is concerned, they they made money off of New Vegas. I'm sure they were just so unhappy. Yeah. Uh, and Neil eighty nine says found that about Fallout seventy six and had to share. Oh well, thanks uh, thanks for that. And uh, uh, Neil uh, eighty nine says. Uh, those themes were all present in the lore. Okay, yeah. So then, one has to has to look at the uh, at the the lore. Oh, and what T Neil was referring to here, I believe, was this one. T Neil eighty nine said for twenty dollars for Paul to be read in John Denver song cadence. Tom, you're gonna have to help me out with this. I don't even know Almost what John loaded. Denver sounds like. It's Virginia. Blurry mountains, no textures in the river. I can't sing, but yeah, I know the song. Life is like the two day paper, two D paper trees, older than their engine. Oh no, here comes another freeze. Something like that, probably. West Virginia, home, Fallout show. I don't know. <laughs> Take me home. Fallout Take me home, home, West Virginia. Yeah, I never yeah. played Fallout seventy six. Yeah, that, that's what he's referring to about Fallout 76. That's uh, that's this John Denver thing. Yeah, but the, the it's really clear that uh, the people involved respected the lore. A respect maybe isn't the right word, but really enjoy the game. Completely opposite to the to the uh, instructions that the Witcher uh, cat. Um, uh, writers and producers were given saying we hate the author we hate the stories <laughs> and we hate yeah. cavill let's yeah. go 
Let's, let's <laughs> exactly. <you know. laughs> yeah. And on to Neil also says, uh, thank you for making a show that doesn't suck. Yeah, it doesn't. They, they really did that. Uh, they really, no it is so, so good. And they, it's so funny the 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 gags in there and the the little side characters and yeah, especially the the characters in the um, you know uh, in that uh, institute where they were going to cut up Lucy into pieces, and and the guys were just so nonchalant. <laughs> so, I mean, it's 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 very very funny. And then Lucy, you know, does the wrong thing, forcing them to open up all the ball, open up all the cages and she's just so optimistic and wants to be wants to do such you know good left-wing things for the people and it turns out no that was actually the wrong decision i mean that actually yeah. was a parody of social you know you know socialist ideals saying you know there's no bad person and it's society's fault and it's the capitalists and so she she actually let all these monsters out of their cages and it was the wrong thing to do so that was that was great you can't it say was that. also uh, another thing it was also cult mentality yes she she is someone that has been in a cult mm -hmm. and this was literally said later on as well that she's you know if have you are familiar with the series the unbreakable kimmy schmidt which, yes uh, which yeah. is a woman like she's just like that she is someone that has been inside of a cult and she's suddenly confronted with the real world and she has no idea to behave. It's another reason that I really enjoyed this series. And watch her watch her been, education. Yes, exactly. It, it's I the, I have to watch it again. I just enjoyed it that much. Well the, the conversation the conversation when her and Maximus were walking along the train tracks and I don't know if you saw that yet, where she was talking well, about... I've seen the whole series. Pardon me? Yeah, so yeah. that conversation where she was talking about, wow, I, I'm completely wrong about what's happening up here. And there's some very funny, ironic lines about how she's gotten everything wrong. I thought that was fantastic. And she's learning. I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a terrific sequence. Yeah, it is. It is. It's absolutely yes. Uh, I could not agree uh, more with that. Uh, a low punter, $4.99, says, Glad some like Fallout, but I'm tired of post-apocalyptic sci-fi. Is anyone doing something else? Why not? Well, I can answer the why not right away. Uh, lockdowns. Many people are going to, uh, to associate more with, uh, with post-apocalyptic because the world is different now. In a way... Not in a literal sense, because the world is still here and everything. But I think that in a spiritual way, we have been through an apocalypse. And I think that is reflected in why we're getting so many post-apocalyptic uh, well, the, series and movies right now. The, the only thing, the only caveat I would add is that I have found the streaming shows really pushed hard on post-apocalyptic even before covid it just to me that was one of my jokes is that do we need another post-apocalyptic show they there's they made tons of them before covid they continue to make them it's a trope in anime and we're getting there's uh, the the girls in you know the, just this, i can't remember the name of the show that was just pushed it's a brand new show about some girls in a post-apocalyptic environment um and then you had that thing where the people weren't you know couldn't talk the, the movies where um it uh featured that couple um and you know if they made any sounds then suddenly these creatures would hear them and, and come attack them so there's there's just we are in the middle of nothing but but this what a post-apocalyptic and must uh, and I got tired of it too. What I do like about Fallout is that they're now dealing with, with humor. Yeah. And on that note, uh, is there something else? Tom, I believe that Stallone has a series that is not post-apocalyptic and very worth checking out, and a little bit funny too, doesn't he? Hey, yo, yeah, yeah. The Tulsa King one uh, is great. I know you said earlier that. Uh, the one show you've been watching, it's the first show you can't wait for the next episode or whatever. Well, yeah, uh, okay, but me, uh, that's that, yeah, but 
for yeah, it was Tulsa Foundation, King. Foundationist in a sense, of the apocalyptic. I was going to say that, like there, uh, yeah. Tulsa King was that for me, uh, and then before that, it was the offer. But yeah, no, they're few and far between. But that's definitely one of them. Tulsa King was one that I couldn't wait for the next week's episode when it was dropping live, and can't wait for the second season. So yeah, so there's some good stuff out there. You just gotta gotta find it. Yeah, and uh, before we move on and put a pin in the super chats again, David Fitzsimmons says for five dollars. I have to realize there's a long, petty, and messy history to Bethesda buying the IP of Fallout from the original team, one that's too long for a super chat. Yeah, that may be worth looking into one of these days. Uh, Paul, you're more familiar with the games than uh, than uh, I am, and uh, hopefully we have uh, Yellow Flash coming in later. Maybe he can speak a little bit more to it. I know that he was busy. But he would come in when he had the opportunity. Are you familiar with uh, with the details of uh, of the Fallout? Because I know that Bethesda didn't create it, but they have it now, which yeah. means that at some point in time, Fallout went from being created by Bethesda to, or from not being associated mm-hmm. with them, to being made by them. Which means at some point there there was an acquisition. Now. How messed up was it? I have honestly no idea. No, I'm. I've I've heard rumors about it. I know that the first two games were made by another studio. The third one, uh, after Bethesda bought it, they they made uh, Fallout Three, and then Oblivion made Fallout New Vegas, and um, you know that's pretty much all i know i know the obsidian the obsidian one you know there is some controversy between obsidian and bethesda but you know again it's just corporate stuff and who cares i right? it's, it's, it's the usual stuff that goes on when ips are are purchased by larger organizations and then bethesda got bought by uh microsoft i think is that who owns them now Oh, that would suck if it's Microsoft. Uh, they may be. I, like I'm, I have not yet had time to read up on who owns who of movie studios. If it's Microsoft, that freaking sucks. I, I gotta. But remember. no, it can't be because Fallout isn't exclusive to to Xbox. Fallout is across the board. I would imagine if they were owned by Microsoft, they would be doing, they would be doing Xbox exclusive, unless of course you have prior deals. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Feel free to to look it up. In uh, March 21, M- Microsoft acquired Bethesda's parent company, ZeniMax. Uh-huh. That's right, because okay. ZeniMax bought Bethesda. <laughs> I think during the massive, uh, no, that was BioWare was Mass Effect. Oh, you know what? I can't even keep track of this stuff. Uh, I, you, I, that's, we need to do a separate thing. It's a <laughs> subsidiary of a conglomerate of an umbrella group Owned by twelve super conglomerates, right? All owned by Amazon, by by the See? World Economic Forum and yeah. Disney. In, in <laughs> the uh, in the ultimate end, yeah, it's the World Economic Forum by way of BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street. There you go. Yeah, uh, or as we also, as it's also known, tax evasion and a subsidiary uh, of right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, in uh, and then uh, to to pay in holding of, of in form of another entity adjacent and adjunct to it, yeah, uh, a completely different LLC. Mm-hmm. That's so. right, LLC underneath yeah. another. Planar aspect uh, gives his uh, his review of the finale, saying she spends it crying and it's enthralling. Yeah, you're not wrong, but there were some well, revelations. You know, we're, we're watching. We're goofing around, but you almost need a map anymore to find out who owns what, and because everybody owns so many, and they're all just like a family tree going all the way to Amazon, basically. Oh, you were goofing? I thought you were being serious. No, I'm not yeah, kidding. I, I know, but you might as well have been. That's no, exactly that's, the, that's what is. we've got now. Like, that's you literally have basically Amazon, Walmart, and pick your next big company here, and all and the other companies are just trees those. down from those. Okay. And that's when it gets scary. It's like in the same thing in the food industry. You got, like, Nestle and... And again, look at who owns those. Lever. And, uh, 
Tom froze up there. But anyway, uh, Master Clockwork sets for $5. Paul, New Vegas took place in 2,281, okay. while the show takes place in 2296. Okay. With a bomb dropping on Shady Sands right after New Vegas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I did read that. Okay, I will um, take your word for it. I was just reading someone else who had mentioned that it was before, but obviously I don't care. I don't care enough to memorize it. Yeah. And uh, base player 2011 EFI sets for $20. Without going into too much detail, Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics was made but interplay and by Interplay, and it was originally a point-and-click game. Mm -hmm. Bethesda purchased the rights to Fallout in 2007 and turned it into more of a shooter. AKA, mm -hmm. they made it more commercial. Nothing, uh, nothing wrong with uh, with that. And since uh, Tom froze, we're probably going to have to manage without him until he's back. Uh, uh, He'll back be back online, soon. but that's all For right sure. because we have um, uh, we have plenty other topics to cover. So let's uh, move on with those. Next one is uh, is uh, the one we see on the uh, on the uh, thumbnail here, which has to do with Elon Musk and uh, more specifically bots on X. And this is a story that comes to us from that part place, who can reveal that uh, bot a bot account promoting Star Wars online was suspended by Elon Musk's ex. Uh, the story reads, an alleged bot account that was promoting Ubisoft and Lucasfilm's game's upcoming Star Wars Outlaws has been suspended by Elon Musk's ex. Social media analyst and YouTuber, master of the TDS, who does an amazing job, you should follow him, reports another bot account I exposed that was shilling for Star Wars Outlaws has been suspended for violating Twitter's policies. Wow. Someone is definitely watching, but who? Then it says, as seen in the post below, he shared a screenshot of the account Elso 82 LP. Now that's a very human name right there, don't you think, dear Paul? <laughs> Being suspended, as well as previous posts from the account that he alleged was engaging in bot behavior. And when they say alleged, that's the kind of language that you legally have to do because it's not yet. Uh, yet uh, proven in a court of law. And what then proceeds, for those who are only listening, are screenshots of, uh, of the, the pictures that uh, are being talked about here, screenshot of uh, an account being suspended, plus screenshots of uh, what this account was posting, which is basically identical uh, messages that uh, as a ton of other accounts have listed. Uh, the story continues. Master of the TDS originally posited the account was part of a network of bots back on April 10th when he wrote, Ubisoft dropped a new story trailer yesterday, April 19th, or 9th for their upcoming Star Wars game. I already exposed some bots potentially running interference for the game and praising the enhanced graphics and NVIDIA's advanced AI technology. Paul, this game right here, have you noticed, and like and this game, of course, Star Wars Outlaws, have you noticed any actual humans praising it for, for these measures, praising it for the incredible job that has been done on the graphics and NVIDIA's advanced AI technology? That seems like a very human thing that fans would praise it for, wouldn't it? I, I the usual uh, online game outlets that we make fun of uh, seem to be the only people praising it. Yeah, indeed. So I, I haven't seen. I mean, again, apart from the uh, tweets, the volume of tweets, but you know, I I don't I don't really care. I, I listen to the people who are talking about the square jawed miss. Indeed. 
And the story goes on when we're breaking down exactly how a master of the TDS has been working, exposing these box uh, bots one by one. As an example here, he has shared six hmm. 26 uh, separate posts from different accounts that posted between March 15th and 16th about the game using NVIDIA's DLS SS3 and RTX technology. These posts were made after NVIDIA GeForce announced on March 14th that Star Wars Outlaws is launching with the performance multiplying NVIDIA DLSS3 ray tracing and reflex. So yeah, that seems a little bit marketing-y that uh, this is what, what uh, seemingly random users trying to promote and signal this game would highlight it for it the nvidia where that went into making it yeah i and the thing is nvidia has basically abandoned the mid-range graphics card market they, they want to sell you 4090s and 4080s they they're not interested in you know all a thousand dollar plus cards they're not interested in selling you 700 dollars cards anymore and uh uh, I, again, it's what is NVIDIA going to get out of this? I, I have uh, no idea. Yeah. And then Intel, the store Intel is bundling it with their com some computers or some of their processors. If you buy an Intel processor, they're bundling the game with it. But again, they're not bundling anything. They're bundling a stub, and then you've got to download the entire game. You, you don't own this game. You own a tiny loader stub. That's all you own. Yeah. And uh, then finally, they refer to Elon Musk, who has basically uh, pledged to take down uh, the various bots and fake accounts while also addressing why, why it is difficult and challenging uh, to do so. But progress is being made. And as an example of that, this a uh, bot that they have been tracking over the course of this article has been taken down. And it being taken down, well, there's some implications of that. One, not only is NVIDIA being promoted by bots, but it would appear that bot accounts are also used to try to make something like Star Wars Outlaws trend. Does that seem like they're very confident in the fans ability to make the uh, make the game trend when we have to resort to bots bots to do so paul i, I you know the, the troubling thing is the cynicism of these large corporations to pull tricks like this i i don't think it helps first of all doing it number two you're going to get caught and are you though i mean how many times has this happened without them being caught because well, uh, can, I, can I just uh, sure. back a little bit? Because here we have Master of the TDS who is following the genre space, which is why he comes across this. What about all of the other marketplaces on Twitter where you don't necessarily have anyone who is dedicated to go after an exposed box? Well, you could also talk about Instagram and, and also uh, TikTok, right? Indeed. Uh is anyone policing what's going on there? I, I think there was way more bot farming uh, prior to Elon. Oh, for sure. Um, coming on board. And he's also pointed out that he's going to stop rage farming too. The the people who have now been, mon been able to monetize their uh, Twitter channel are now throwing up crazy shit onto their Twitter and then getting people to go after them. And they're just making money off of saying that you know saying some fairly incendiary things that probably they don't mean or care about and and elon is trying to police that also i don't know how he's going to work that uh into his uh policing scheme but obviously uh, i i just don't see how this helps corporations on the other hand corporations are hiring third-party social media experts and marketing companies and they can just say Oh, we didn't know what they were doing. That doesn't follow our corporate policy. We think this is reprehensible. So they can just deny, right? I think, yeah, I think that's exactly right. Because, I mean, that's what digital marketing is all about. 
And that is how digital marketing agencies prove their worth by getting things to trend. It's Correct. not the corporations themselves that try to make something trend. I mean, those are the ones that uh, have their own marketing department that does that. But the marketing department, they don't necessarily have the know-how to do that. That's why you have third-party consultancy mm -hmm. agencies, not necessarily Sweet Baby Inc. and Gamers X and stuff like that, but just straight up um, digital marketing agencies that tell, that tell you, we will get your product trending. Mm -hmm. We will give you so and so many impressions in social media. They don't promise anything in sales. No. The assumption is that that kind of visibility is going to translate into sales. So what their job to do is just to create that kind of visibility and do whatever is needed to do that. And, and, and it could be negative based. Indeed, because that's that's like the thing that uh, we have spoken about before that uh, these, or you especially, Paul, have have highlighted that, that these corporations, they don't actually know any qualitative stuff. No. They can read spreadsheets with quantitative data, but there is no quantitative measuring for this sucks and fans won't respond to it, um, or this is done really well and it's going to be a huge hit. The only thing that the, the, the executives can read is, this is this brand. This is the past performance of this brand. We can therefore expect such and such future performance. Regardless of what we do with it, just because it has this brand identity, therefore we can throw in whatever messaging that there is in order to diversify it so more and more and more people want to see it. Because not a single one of the executive uh, people can take one look outside of all of the quantitative data about how many people and billions upon the planet you're going to appeal to by diversifying this much because no one understands that you just made it suck and it'll appeal to no one but that's not a digital marketing business is a problem all they have to do is to get it rent and if they have to employ some bots to do that they're going to do that yeah and and they have terms like funnel we've increased the funnel the marketing funnel yes indeed with all of its stages yes from awareness right. to 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 buy any marketer out there will know that instantly i'll go to the market i got foods <laughs> okay. oh yeah. you're talking about exactly. the other kind of market sorry yeah, yeah. oh the, that's my uh factor seven i mean five. yeah that's you your get, that's you your get, food right there you get other terms like um uh, you know, uh, you know, you can see with our final uh, results, uh, we've targeted the influencers with uh, engaging assets to act as uh, platforms for conversation. Those are the you'll you'll get gobbledygook like that at a business meeting, and everyone will be just nodding their heads, and no one knows what that means. Uh, no, and no one wants to. No one wants to be the one to point out that the emperor has no clothes. Correct. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I, I, love, uh, I love all that you know, gobbledygook terminology. Yeah. I think that's funny. I'd love to be in the, uh, into the, to be in one of those rooms and point out, but the emperor has no clothes. Uh, I, you know, I actually, I had a colleague once when I, uh, back in finance who did that, who was in a big meeting. Uh, and uh, pointed out there's a serious big problem here that you haven't thought about in this project. You know what happened to him? What? I got fired. <laughs> I I started actually your web. You know what happened? You know what happened afterwards? He got a job as a someplace else. But well, he did. But with a, but uh, what he had pointed out was exactly right, and the company lost thirty billion. Oh boy. 30 million, sorry. So, yeah. That, that's a big difference in numbers. But I, I, because I'm good both on the uh, technical side and also translating the technical stuff to lay people, one of the impetuses for starting your web department, my existing company, was I would be in the middle of a meeting with an IT individual and then a creative marketing person like the president of a marketing company that had no technical experience at all and i would hear the it person uh just 
a, just provide a litany of IT gobbledygook. And the president of the marketing company would just go would nod their heads. And I knew they didn't understand a single thing. And I got really mad because I thought that the IT person was purposely doing this. They were, they were purposely showing how big their IT balls were and, and obfuscating the conversation with, with gobbledygook that they knew that this guy would not understand to be able to get away with purchases of servers and software and things like licenses, things like that. He would just nod his head and say, well, yeah, do whatever it is that you want. Marketers will do that. And I got really mad. I got furious with the amount of stuff that technical people were putting over the heads of creative people. And so we started your web department as a way to bridge bridge that without um, bullshitting uh, people. Uh, but again, uh, uh, you know, people in power with knowledge will use that against other people as a weapon, which is what happens with all this social media stuff, especially when you get a son, young social media Turk talking to a, a, a boomer. <laughs> You know, and they're saying things like the good news is, is that we've just launched a program that ignites the existing community and attracts the new members by amplifying the experience with relevant and engaging content. <laughs> and that's a sentence I actually heard in a meeting. Yeah. And then the, the bad news is, but we end up losing a ton of money in the process. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, the flaw with the plan. But uh, to round this out. Tom, are you surprised that Star Wars Outlaws has been busted for using bots to uh, to promote it? I would be more surprised if you told me it was raining today, right? Because that's how normal that news was to me. Like, of course they have bots. Duh. <laughs> like, I mean, but then again, we just need the proof now, right? So... Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's I mean, much more. There ain't much more I can say to that. I mean, yeah, I've always known they've had bots. We've known that for a while. I mean, yeah, we well, we have, uh, we have had very strong reason to suspect. We have, uh, been fairly certain that they have, uh, that they have bots because it seems very, yeah. very obvious. And in the case of this, the only one that's going to be speaking positively about this game. And the technology that went into making it are going to be bots well, pushing the game and the they, technology behind it. I certainly hope they buy the game and play it. Yeah, I mean, if a bot can't do that, what good is it? Absolutely, we're getting to a point it might be able to though. <laughs> <laughs> and a tipping bond uh, sent us a member chat asking: So, are bots on X? Just a way for companies to get around paying for advertising. Yes. In yes. a sense, yes. Ah. And they manipulate a, yes, uh, a lot of other things too. Um, well, that makes sense. But well, it's, you guys... not, it's not just an X, it's everywhere. For instance, if yeah. you, uh, I would ask you to, to look for this because I know that this certainly is the case in Norway. And I'm sure it is many other places as well. And it never, ever fails. Whenever a new movie is coming out in cinemas, and I'm sure it must be the case wherever you are, you're going to have people who look like regular people with open frills of robots and with friends and stuff like that. And then they say something along the lines of, we have to see this one. And then they tag one of their friends. And some variation of that. We have to see this. This looks amazing. And then tag someone else. Trying to create the appearance for any actual people watching that these legit are people tagging each other, saying how amazing this I looks. Think the time, to date. I think the time... I think between... Those are bots on Facebook. And I'm I was sure going to say... Many other places. I think the time we kind of really realized they're at least as you said, had a good suspicion and it was, we knew we were probably right. was during the, it's a triumph phase. Cause you guys remember that every, every Marvel movie that came out there for a, a little bit was it's a triumph. And you could type that in and <laughs> you'd have bots upon bots upon bots. So going Shang Chi is a triumph. The Eternals was a triumph. So yeah. This you became had like the, the norm for a while. Yeah. yeah and there was just had, like, dozens somebody. and hundreds of them. You had some lead articles to set the establishment narrative. Like, for instance, the movie is Triumph. So you had something that can be quote, 
uh, quote tweeted and retweeted infinitely by bots. Yeah, that's exactly the, the case. And uh, then we got another message here from WDW Pro saying for $9.99, always love listening in with Midnight Sedge every time it's on. Well, thank you, Pro, and uh, awesome job with, the, with this story, like with everyone else. So kudos to that park place for once again nailing it it was a great interview you did with the uh, master of the tds himself as well so of course everyone check out our yeah, friends been... over at uh that park place and wdw pro of course there's some send him the link if he's there. free yeah do do send him the link and feel free to hop in if you uh if you want to uh, so yeah, and let's see if there's any other super chats pertaining specifically to this before we uh, before we move on. Um, vengeful dragon garlic bread expert Tom, can you read this one? I know for a fact Star Trek has uh, had a bot machine going since 2011 that went MIA. Uh, Ahab, I think as soon as money dro- dried up, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I've heard of a lot about this and uh you know even the Snyder movement was kind of busted for being a, a bot farm for the most part too so pro I'm not so sure about that I think you might be AI I I'm not going to let the jury go on yet on that one well and the thing is these marketing companies that uh, advertise engagement actually pitch this they'll they'll yeah. put you to a into a room and they'll say, well, we've got these bots and we've circumvented the protections of these companies. They actually, I've heard it for years. I mean, at one point it was, we have an entire group of people in India that will do, I mean, they're very open about what their methodology is and it changes all the time. This was even going back in the day when to get more uh, social media engagements, uh, uh, you used to put white text on a website. So you could put all sorts of extra content um, on your website, uh, competitive content. And then at one point, Google said, no, we will no longer accept white text. If we see white text in the background on a white page, then you're going to be degraded. So people have been trying tricks like forever. Yeah, that's been around for some time. But um, I think the first time I kind of became aware of it within the entertainment side of things. Um, I mean, I kind of always had an idea that they probably did do some sort of uh, bot for farming of some type in the past to kind of help promote movies and stuff on social media. But I think at least I don't know about I can't speak for Andre, but I'm sure he, he but I'm pretty sure that this is probably the same point where he realized it, too, is when we got involved with uh, the Star Trek stuff. I mean, he was technically involved with it before I came on the board, but when it was really getting to the heat of the moment when stuff was on actually coming on they were actually dropping the show i was here and uh, at that point we started uh, talking about this one company called parrot analytics and i'm sure i don't know if you're familiar with this company or you've heard the name before but they're basically a company that comes in and they um gauge uh social media engagement on anything right so and basically they can write you an article about anything you want and tell you anything you want based on this so like when star trek discovery came out these were the guys behind all these articles where star trek discovery is a success it's been trending it's doing this it's doing that well all they're gauging is that somebody said star trek discovery right and this is what we were pointing out they're not first of all gauging is somebody saying star trek discovery sucks because that counts as an engagement still and then we i also kind of thought about and i think andre did as well about how they could manipulate this system by having bots basically you know, by generating positive word of word of mouth. And then we saw it later on with Disney. So yeah, this has been something that's kind of been in at least my crosshairs for a while is a possibility or obvious thing that's going on at least. And it's been since then, if not sooner, I'm sure it has been going on for some, some time, especially. And does anyone know whether it works or not? It works whenever you want to say something like that, right? Like, you well, know, no, we could get you the results that they are promoting in a optical way yes but not in a way but at the end of the day does it really win you over with the fans or nothing no right i mean who's watching star trek discovery i mean if they're if the only thing that's going on right now is the bots are promoting it that means nobody's paying attention right like that's the point yeah um i mean the the joke in corporate world 
is where are the conversions? That's that's really if if your programs don't result in conversions. But I know an awful lot of companies hire the multimedia stuff and then they see the big numbers and they just ignore the fact that there's not been any conversions. They they figure that they're at least doing something. Even it, it's somehow it's going to have an effect on the brand. But if there's no conversions, then what's the point of the program, right? Indeed. Must have conversions. I am converting you. <laughs> yeah, that is indeed, uh, indeed, uh, the show. Before we, uh, before we move on here and um, uh, to the next topic, let's uh, see what you guys are saying on this topic. Uh, uh, a tipping bond has been a member for 17 months saying, so are bots on X just a way for companies to get around for paying for advertising? Yeah, we brought this one up. Uh, this is what got us on actually. the subject in the first place, yeah. I think. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Chaos Sonic 1 wonders, uh, what killed the triumph phase? We got on, we, caught on to him. <laughs> yeah, we caught on to the fact that it was no triumph. And also, it wasn't meant to last. It was only meant to get people into opening weekend. And it worked as well as it possibly could for that, I guess. And no opening weekend has been the same ever since. So I would say it backfired. And uh, Pilgrim Media says, uh, remember, Elon was at the forefront warning about AI. Yeah, he was indeed. And uh, look at it now. Now we even have to declare if there's AI in the videos on YouTube. So so uh, did James Cameron, but he's using it and uh, he's using it to ruin his movies now. What do you mean by declaring AI in the thing now? What now? No, did you have like this thing when you uh, when you upload a video, you now have to declare if there's any AI resemblance of like living persons and stuff like that in it. Oh wow, not really in my in the said uh, side of things yet. Maybe it's just on. Uh, yeah, no, it's you Western have to phase. upload videos. Yeah, and you don't see it in streams. Ha, ha, I know, you, I upload videos. <laughs> are you? Are you? Yeah, flip the little, um, the little flag on the very first page, and there's an added thing that says, mm. "Are you manipulating an existing um, video and making people say things that they didn't say, or something to those the words to that effect?" Yeah, exactly. So no more videos about Biden, let's put it that way, or with Biden. <laughs> uh, and uh, T. Neil 89 says for $10, oh, I wonder if we'll see an influx of bots or similar things now that the powers that be seem to be realizing the all publicity is good publicity adage is void since it assumes a baseline of quality. I don't think we are there yet where, where the where everyone at large is going to see that. I think digital marketing still has sufficient hold that they'll be able to sway people with quantitative bullcrap, uh, and it's going to take a level of expertise to see the quality factor that most of the big corporations just don't have, my thought. What say you, Paul? I, I agree with you. No, I, I think you're you're absolutely right. But again, we've got lazy executives who've got to uh, justify their existence to higher ups, right? So um, the incompetence goes upwards. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, and uh, then let's uh, move on a little bit, uh, a little bit further here, sticking with uh, with that part place. The next story uh, involves Pokemon Go. Another project to have uh, used uh, consultancy services, not from Sweet Baby Inc., not from Black Girl Gamers, but from another little company called. Why is this not working? Oh, there. There we go. Another little company called Gamer X. That's G E A Weimer. X. Yes. So yeah, they were able to put a Y into Gamer to let you know where they stand. And the headline here reads, Sweet Baby Inc. style consultancy firm Gamer X consulted with Niantic 
before radical changes and avatar changes were made in Pokemon Go. Uh, now, of course, I'm not too much of a Pokemon user myself, but the gist of this is the, this too has been diversified. The story reads, consultancy firm GamerX, which operates similar to Sweet Baby Inc., consulted with Pokemon Go developer Niantic ahead of the company's radical gender and avatar changes to the game. As reported by former World of Warcraft team lead Mark Kahn, that would be our good friend Grumps, uh, GamerX notes on their website they have consulted with Niantic, uh, Voalition, and Behavior Interactive. And like Sweet Baby Inc., the company claims it is proud to offer consulting and training services to the games industry. As part of our mission to support and celebrate LGBTQIA people and culture in games, we offer a selection of LGBTQIA plus centered training curricula, as well as customized solutions designed to advance diversity, equity, visibility, and inclusion in gaming. Oh my God! It's it's a cat it's a Catholic catechism now, isn't it? It's just. Yeah, I was about to say because Paul, you of course you um, you were out in the barricades back in the day when there was still something to fight for, fighting for gay rights. Mm -hmm. uh, would you would you say that that battle has been uh, has been won now? Uh, it's been subverted um, uh, for maybe fifteen years, at least in the GTA region. I know it's different all over the world and in North America, but it was a Halcyon era of, uh, of uh, you know, gay employees, gay uh, clients, and people just being people. Uh, uh, you know, the, the goal was to just be accepted in society for who you are, um, but um, somehow it that was not good enough. I, yeah, and, well, and now, now we have this and. And, well, you better not be too masculine or too feminine if you try to use Pokemon Go. Go, I mean, uh, because uh, <laughs> that, I like that. That's, that's a good, <laughs> good, good Freudian slip. <laughs> that was actually that's completely unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> previously reported that the Antics new avatar update for Pokemon Go completely removes sexed bodies. He wrote on X, the Pokemon Go app <laughs> removed gender from all Pokemon Go players. It, it, I swear, it looked like an I from where I was standing. Players yesterday in a sweeping change that left fans at Pokemon Go hub net furious. I took a look at the character creator myself, says Grums. Gender is gone replaced by a hodgepodge of androgynous options. Nothing can be too feminine or too male. Facial hair options gone, he asserted. Male faces had softened features. Female faces had masculine jaws or thin lips. Bodies are blobs. Everything is designed to blend together in some Frankenstein-like gender-free utopia. Or dystopia, as normal people call it. The end result leaving no one satisfied. And so, yeah, this is then what uh, Gamer X has done. Made the game completely sexless and joyless. And good luck seeing yourself in the avatar, unless you yeah, are... This, this all comes straight out of your theory. This, this is the problem, and uh, you know, uh, I, I, uh, I worked with a thousand, you know, gay men over the years in makeup and and costuming and things like that. This is not driven by the traditional, uh, you know, gay male homosexual side of things because they love women. This is, I hate to say it, uh, angry lesbians uh, and and maybe trans individuals that somehow want to there's rant. another kind of lesbian no of course there no i i i've worked with many talented I, it was a joke paul it was a joke not not at all it's a it's a very diverse community but yeah i, appreciate I know the joke. so 
So the thing is, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, this, this, again, the, the, the uh, social justice warrior version of, of people. Um, and they just are angry bunch of people and they don't, they, you know, they, they want uh, everything to be same. They want women to be men and they want men to be women. And it's not the, it's not the contingent of, of gay people that I worked with for a couple of decades. It's not the same group, which is what I don't understand. And I, I'm, I'm sure they're, at pains to explain this group of angry, uh, you know, the contingent from their own own uh, LGBT group that have foisted this because I I'm I'm I know for a fact because I still talk to some of them that they don't like any of this. They want but women do, to look like women. They like that. I mean, but do they really see this as coming from their own group? Because when you have LGBTQIAP+, that's a whole hodgepodge of very different people with some very different ideas and some very different ideologies. Like well, the yeah. LGB side of the equation, which I personally feel could be shortened to just G, Generally, just wants to be left alone oh, from yes. your prejudice. And, but and then, when you but then you get to the to the uh, T and the you, A, you on, especially yes. the A, who are who are virtue signaling people, and they don't want anyone to be left alone. They want in your face, and you have to change your your ways and your lifestyle and play along with what they want these are radically different perceptions so your friends who have been fighting for for just their own rights to do what they want and to be left alone should they really feel feel that these people come from their community or is someone that has forced their way and maybe hijacked their movement a little bit i i would love to hear from the gay contingent out there i have gay family members um, I can talk with them, but I'm going to um, hazard a guess that as bad as it was, let's say in the uh, 70s and 80s, where a lot of my friends were afraid to come out uh, to their parents or to the public, um, I think they're living more in fear of this group than previously. I, I think that this is why you don't hear a really large, um, you know, gay contingent sort of fighting the political side of things, because I think they're really afraid to be outed by what is ostensibly their own group as being traitors. I, I think this, they're more afraid of that. Yeah, that could very well be. I mean... Any final thoughts on how well this is going to work out for Pokemon Go to be so uh, so inclusive? I didn't know monsters had genders like that. I mean, did it really matter? The the change in the characters is not as uh, based on just the few that I've seen are not so obvious compared to the square jaw jawing of uh, Lara Croft and and uh, this uh, Star Wars. Right. Movie. Uh, so I don't know whether it's going to be as as big a deal. I think it's a shame. I think it's a shame that Nintendo has buckled under. That that to me is really sad. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess in the main characters there could be some, pro you know, changing. Like you said, I mean, not even being sarcastic here. I mean, does it really matter when it comes to monsters? I mean, I, I don't know. If they put <laughs> they, they put testicles on Pokemon, I think all hell will break loose. Well, you got to DLC those, and it costs extra. That's right. <laughs> uh, well, they could have a real trans character because trans change over time, right? I mean, that's what true. Pokemon is. It evolves. So you have the, I mean, it, you know, you have the, the the basic trans, then you add chest blocks and 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 uh, and uh, uh, and drugs, and then they change into monsters. <laughs> right. I just got no big trouble. Yeah. I mean, in reality, though, like, yeah, I can only see this affecting the human characters. So, yes, like, yeah, it's, it's, so Charmander yeah, is be. not going to suddenly um, 
get puberty blockers. Yeah, no, probably not. <laughs> Pikachu was, was not going to become Pikachu or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was looking for, I think there was one super chat uh, for you. I there. didn't see any specific, but yeah, if you see there one, there was I one. Wondering. And I think I may have uh, may deleted have it? it by mistake, but I, I'll oh. find it again here. Uh, um, I think. Uh, well, I'm, because I know that you have to be leaving here. I have to uh, go now. There, 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 was, yeah. there was someone congratulating both you and me. With we have this. Pastor. Paul, are we already have sexed Pokemon, Digimon, etc.? It's called fan artwork. It says STR Redwolf. Well, yeah, and this yeah. community has already existed. I don't know why they're trying to pander to it, though, STR Redwolf. No offense. My, my daughter's a Pokemon fan. I'm not. Yeah, I don't know much don't about play. Pokemons. That's a pretty big deal, though, for uh, for a quite uh, quite uh, many people. Well, this is was my point where I think we're still a long way away from eradicating DEI from stuff. Yeah, that battle is very far from one. Here, I found it. Um, it was Morgan oh. King, who's been a member for thirty months, saying, "Happy birthday, Andre and Paul! Keep up the great work." Uh, let's see if I can get the balloons. There we go. Oh, that's, yeah, that's right. You guys' birthdays are pretty close together. Yeah, two yeah. days. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being here, Paul. And do I get uh, a TV guide video anytime soon, please? And thank you. Yeah, it's it's now been written. Oh, my God. These TV guides are getting bigger and bigger. Although they'll, I think they're going to get smaller and smaller. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, that's actually that's a video on its own right there. Just seeing the increased output of uh, in TV productions using the TV guide as the historic document, see the rows where, well, where did it peak and uh, shrink off again. It's funny you mention that, Andre, because I'm assuming that the part of the reason for the need for streaming to survive was you had this glut, this balloon of need for content on television with the with the advent of cable, at least going you know, mainstream where you had not just 20 to 25 channels. Now you had hundreds of channels, right? So you needed a bunch of content to fill those channels. And it's kind of the same thing with a streaming service now, but what's happening to cable, it's dying off less than 50% of the country has cable now. Um, and, and now we're looking at a situation where we're going to hit a crisis of where they can't pay enough for the programs that they have to fill. So they're just going to keep showing old stuff. Yeah, so it's going to become like terrestrial television all over again. I, I can't remember who did Murders in the Building, but Hulu, uh, I think it was. Like it Hulu. FX. Why, why isn't that on NBC? Like this is the stupidest thing in the world. Let's let's cut down the amount of good product we have on our on our terrestrial out, outlet, so we reduce the number of people who are watching it. Putting it on, put it onto this cable, this this pay service that nobody is paying for, and spread ourselves so thin that we just lose everything. I mean, it's 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 the it's going to go down in some business book as the dumbest strategy. In I agree, in uh, and I think Andre nailed it with comparing Netflix and and trying to have the studios all do their own streaming service to the world's dumbest format war because yeah. he's right. What you had is it would have been the equivalent of during the VHS beta war or the DVD, you know, um, yep. All every war we've had, anyway. basically it'd be like every, instead of just having two formats, every studio goes, we're going to do our own format. So you literally are dealing with five formats in the freaking yeah. <laughs> at the same time. It's like, yeah, we would, so we would have been way, way farther ahead. If people let Netflix be Netflix and Hulu becomes the um, rerun exactly yeah. that's it that's all it is i agree and we would who, have been so far ahead and then amazon and netflix fight it out like hbo and showtime used to for you know whatever one was going to get the movie packages for whatever thing yeah. now we got mgm owned by amazon fox owned by disney, disney. and we right could have paramount owned paramount. by sony before we know it yeah this is terrible this is really horrific so 
Yeah. Yeah. And we got a member chat on this topic. London uh, 19657 says, although an old fart, I began playing Pokemon Go for exercise and I've spent some cash in six years. Folks are pissed. They look cool yesterday and fuggly today. There you go. So there's someone who um, might stop playing it. There you go. Yeah, indeed. And Chaos Sonic also says for five dollars people are mad that gamers x ruined their avatars in pokemon go and are now oh really so they wow. they changed but I it, don't like... get it they weren't offensive to begin with to what end were they just doing this to flex like no yeah well I yeah obviously uh yeah t Neil also points out nice to see gamer x are as clever as their name yeah they certainly would, did a really clever business move right here so now it's really well, we need inclusive to, expose them all. to the uh to the uh gender fluid community so just imagine how many billions of more people will now be using pokemon pokemon go now that they can finally identify with it thank god thank 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 God. I'm I'm okay. just so I'm so happy. Anyways, um, I'm gonna uh, I have to leave. I have to write more stupid stuff um, because we don't have enough of it. And have a nice weekend, everyone. And hopefully see you on uh, Monday. Yes, indeed. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Oh. Be sure to check out both uh, Call Me Chato and Appalling News on on YouTube. Both lots of appalling very news. worth your time. Appalling Thank you, news. everyone. Yes. Talk to you later. Bye. Take care. And yes. uh, with that, let's uh, head back to the back to the to the top super chats. For, uh, super chats. Yeah, we've got uh, happy birthday, Andre Feliz Caprianos from uh, Fletcher Williams. Gracias, Thank you Fletcher. so much. Yeah, and then uh, we've got killing it over at Midnight at Espanol. And then this is when you wanted to save Andre. Why so much melodic metal in Scandinavia? Asked Pilgrim Media. Well, uh, you, you say melodic. And I imagine that is uh, you combining the words melodic and melancholic. And I think that has much to do with the culture and the weather influencing one another, or rather so the weather and the isolation. Uh, that, that, uh, that, that's part of the, um, part of the, um, the theme and the music. If you listen to... There's many different kinds of, of uh, black metal. You have like the true Norwegian second wave black metal, which is just aggressive as hell with the really angry guitar riffs faster than anything thrash metal. And then you have the, the later more synth-like stuff, which is more melancholic in nature. And finally, you have the melodic stuff. Now, if you play all of it over a snowy background landscape you'll see that all of it can be the soundtrack of the nordic because it's kind of like that's the, the that's the emotional space basically that you get from being there it's a cold lonely place and that is what transmits uh, transmits itself into into the music that is from there uh, and uh, then, of course, you have like other themes that go in there as well with alienation. And that's a different thing. There's two sides of that. I mean, one is, is like the Scandinavian and Nordic societies, they look very happy and very well off at first glance. But the closer you look, the cracks are going to start appearing. And there's a level of alienation there, with many people feeling that this is not how we're supposed to live. And then you have different, different uh, parts to blame for that. Part of it is, is the social democracy itself, which is kind of like forced onto the all of the Nordic nations post-World War II with a set of attitudes and conformism that wasn't part of the culture before and what many people and especially the black metal community feel going back even further it's uh, it's the loss of uh, the original paganism lifestyle and all of these are like different level of of alienation which also are influenced through this particular type of music
I would say that is why. That is why, like, this kind of music could only have come from there. You, you have, like, similar stuff elsewhere, but that particular kind of expression, I think, could only have come from right there. Well, I hope you think you got your $2 worth Pilgrim Media. Then we got Walt Man 4 who sends in nine ninety nine and says, well, at least we got 35 millimeter film photography to fall back on since their resurgence with the third parties. Now Pantex and Roli, if I'm saying that right, or uh, Roli, uh, to small extent are making film cameras again. Oh, I did not know this. Um, but uh, I'm not totally surprised. I mean, I kind of did predict we we're going to get kind of a resurgence at some point. And this generally happens. When, I mean, we, I've said it for a while. Just digital still does not capture the way that film did. No matter how hard they've tried. It just doesn't. It still looks has a video video quality quality to it. Um, it feels too sterile. Uh, there's something about the way film captures light differently, and I don't know how to put my finger on it. But uh, there there's a lot of directors out there who agree with that. I mean, and they'll they'll still edit and stuff on digital, which is fine. But it's to me, it's that process like. I think more directors should film on film and then just scan it in digitally and work from there. Cause then I think the process would be a lot easier, but I still think cutting film out of the equation, or at least for especially more prestigious projects was a mistake. Like, I mean, if we're talking like smaller deals, like sound of freedom, stuff like that, I don't, I don't see a need for that to be on film, but I mean, look at something like Dune, right? I think that, they're showing it in 70 millimeter, but it's still shot in digital. Mostly there is some IMAX stuff I know, but I think that were shot digital IMAX, not on actual film. I could be wrong. Um, but the only films that I know of that have actually used film lately were that, that Wes Anderson film, uh, Tarantino's last film. Uh, uh, what's the one uh, Oppenheimer was shot in mostly film. So it's very rare, but it still does happen from time to time. That movie about Hollywood recently, I think that was shot on film too. I can't think of the name of it, but the the one that had Han Solo kid in it. Um, I don't even call it right now. Yeah, yeah, it's not that old of a movie, but uh, yeah, it was about Hollywood and debauchery, and I can't think of the name. Oh, uh, uh, yes, I know the one with Margot Robbie and stuff, right? Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't recall the title. Of it it looked so. great, but I couldn't watch it. After a few minutes into it, I'm like, this is just a dumb yeah, movie, but it, crap, it, it looked beautiful. Crap. You know, I couldn't say anything as far as, like, the, the quality of it. Like, I'm like, great it, it is. Great director who dropped the ball on that one. Yeah, but, yeah uh, I just couldn't on. get into it. Yeah, anyway, yeah. So that's cool. Uh, then we got D-Bud Martin who says, uh, Andre, happy birthday, boss man. Just don't go Hollywood on us and spend all this on hookers and blow. No, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Dead Cat says, Happy birthday, Andre. Uh, wow, this is fast becoming an annual event. It does, it's funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah, Every we haven't year. had a birthday stream yet, though. Uh, so yeah, I know. we need to have that for it to truly become an annual event. Uh, yes. Uh, but- and we have a guest joining us here, but I'm going to finish this up here. Uh, anywho, uh, buy yourself something nice. One more thing. What does it mean when, you're, when your piss is the same color as Lucasaid? Not a joke. I'm actually concerned. Well, <laughs> I don't know what Lucasade is. Do you know what Lucasade is, Andre? Well, we have, uh, well, I know this. Um, see if it comes out uh, that color uh, after you have drunk a ton of water as well. Uh, yeah, and it might just does, be a you need to get that looked into. Yeah, otherwise I would definitely have that looked into. Uh, somebody who was having things looked into, I'm just kidding. Did you get back from the prostate doctor yet? <laughs> it's not a... See what happened to Chad McBozeman. I probably should get that done. You might. Why? Well, yeah, you might want to, uh, especially at our age. But how you doing, Flash? Uh, we didn't, weren't sure if you're going to make it before the end of the show. We were just going through super chats. I thought I'd jump in for your final little bit here. Awesome. Now that I'm back, glad to have you. Uh, how's your day been besides your appointment? Pretty hectic because I had to get up early to get all my stuff done. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Yeah. yeah, I had that earlier this week. Yeah, and uh, what's uh, th- this week been another big week for gaming? What's uh, stood out for you the most? Oh, that hilarious Pokemon Go stuff, and uh, yeah, we yeah, were just we talking, were just talking, about, talking that. about it. Yeah, that's, that's that's funny. Funny. Your, that they comment. 
it's just more blurring the lines between men and women. It's just funny that this happens to a game that, I mean, this came out in 2017. I really don't understand the need to change this. You know what? Was it 2016 me? or 17? I don't remember when it came out, but. How long do you think that this would have done to implement uh, implement this change? How long? From someone deciding we need to hire someone like GameRex to do this and then do the planning, do the coding, and dro then dropping it. How long do you think that this would have been in the works before they finally executed this right now or deployed this right now? I don't know how long it takes to do that stuff, but probably I would think at least a year. Yeah, because sounds, it's, uh... it's just changes to the avatar, right? So, I mean, six months to a year, probably, for this yeah. to have been implemented. Because it's funny how we get all of this gaming madness right now. Now, is, is it all being exposed now, or is some more of it happening now? Like, to me, that's another interesting question uh, in into all of this as well. Uh, like is uh, someone really making a big push here into into gaming, uh, or is uh, is someone getting desperate because it's not working out the way they want? Because if they think that wow, now people are really going to start flock to Pokemon Go, someone's in for a nasty surprise. Me thinks. I think there's a lot of uh, coincidence. That, like it's it's more a lot of this kicked off with Suicide Squad two. That's when people really started to get this heavy conversation going. Because if you think about it, right after Suicide's two, like Suicide, uh, what is it? Kill the Justice League. Yes. That's what I meant. Not Suicide Squad 2. Uh, that dropped. Then everyone started to look into Sweet Baby. Then we found out about all these other games. And then we found out about all these other companies. And then everyone started to look at how those games were handled. And then all of a sudden you have stuff like Star Wars Outlaws drop. It's just been one thing after another ever since Suicide Squad dropped. And that's what's really brought a lot of this to attention. Because it wasn't a lot of the stuff a little, a little bit un, unnoticed, I think, for a while. But it was with that sweet baby stuff that people really started to dig. Because people were kind of talking about it with Spider-Man 2. Remember when that dropped? Yeah. You know, the Mary Jane chin. And then that kind of died down. And then sweet baby got attached to Suicide Squad because everybody was pissed off about Batman and then Sweet Baby really got looked at and then that kind of brought up a retroactive conversation with Spider-Man 2 and then you know it was just one thing after another and it's kind of just reached a tipping point it's funny that outlaws, you, uh... outlaws a week or so ago and now bam we're talking about Pokemon yeah. Go it's funny that you mentioned Spider-Man 2 because if you look at Mary Jane she kind of got the got the same visual treatment there as any woman does in Pokemon Go right now, which is a se severe masculinization of features, stronger jawbones and everything like that, just to... Yeah, she like got a good testosterone injection, didn't she? Yep, and next week we're going to have uh, the meltdown over Stellar Blade, because that drops next week on the 25th. So That's going to be gonna fun. Be yeah, I can't wait because the journalists are going to give it bad reviews. I guarantee you in multiple reviews, you're going to see like those blocks blurbs talking about male gaze and uh, women's bodies and shit. And you're going to see scores knock down points because of how she looks. I guarantee you that's going to happen. Of course. I mean, her, her look is really offensive to beached whales everywhere. But what's funny is uh, Hades 2 is being celebrated for muscle mommies and uh fit women but i guess one of them is gay so as long as she's gay it's okay if she's you know got a sexy body because she doesn't fuck men so you know that that's they they they're not so quiet about this shit and i love that everyone's jumping all over it if you're if you're a heterosexual you have to be displayed as a woman is unattractive but if you're gay you can be super hot it's just funny they don't really try to hide their agenda. Yeah, no, like we are in an, the age of normalization now. There's no need to hide anything. Uh, so yeah, now their their yeah, masks are off to put it to put it that way, which uh, hopefully is just going to make it all the easier for the for the uh, gamers to vote with their wallets. 
Uh, and so I do hope that the gamers at large are very aware of this, even the casual gamers. And that's what worries me the most. With something like Suicide, uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, gamers are aware of it because that's a game for the hardcore gamers, right? They're an online bunch. They know what's going on. They know when to drop a title. Of course, it was never good in the first place. But they know that, oh, now there's more reasons to drop this like a bad habit, which is why you only have like a couple of thousand active players on that thing left right now. But something like Pokemon Go, that appeals more to the casual gamers, doesn't it? Who maybe aren't aware. They're kids. Gonna see that the, yeah, kids. They're just going to see that these characters... Kids are play Pokemon ugly. Go. Yeah, do you think that the, many of them are going to stop playing in protest? Or w will it be even noticeable a decline in, in uh, the user base? What do you think is going to happen with that? Will Nintendo see that oh, this was maybe not the best idea? Yeah, I don't know, because I don't know how many people still play Pokemon Go, to be honest. Uh, not as many as uh, when it first came out, and it was all the rage. But I would imagine, because of the casuals, it may have a fair user base. I mean, otherwise, why do this at all? They wouldn't do this if there was no user base. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many people still play it, but... I it's tough to say if people will stop playing it because Pokemon has a pretty rabid fan base. I mean, Very they still keep so, coming yeah. back to these games that make minimal changes. Pokemon comes up yearly now and it's, it's almost kind of become a call of duty thing. Same fucking game with very little changes. That's one of the reasons why pal girl or pal world was so big because it gave people what they wanted in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's see on Super Chats related to this. Paris Plain, uh, my countryman, says, Sweet Baby Inc. detected 374,026 curated followers. So, yeah, Cabruto's doing great right there. Uh, and uh, then Ace, 1589, 2001, says for $5. Hate to break it to you, but Pokemon already has puberty blockers. It's called the B button. Kudos to those who get the joke. Yeah, well. Uh, I've never I'm heard sure of the Pokemon. I do, but I've never even liked Pokemons. I mean,. Pikachu, Pikachu looks kind of cute because he looks like a chinchilla, but I think I prefer a real chinchilla. Uh, and uh, then let's uh, see here. Um... Your crickets sound so horrible. <laughs> this is what crickets actually sound like. These oh, are gosh. copyright free crickets. Thank you. So are these. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, the you first can't copyright a cricket person. sound. What the hell? Somebody owns that sound, Tom. No, uh, well, this is on my soundboard, and we don't get copyright claim for a sound effect. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, like a yellow flash. No, those were some sweet AI crickets right there. All right, back <laughs> to work. Chaos Sonic says for five dollars, they're getting exposed. As Grums point out, it took them two years for Capcom. They're now getting exposed and people are mad. Yeah, that's Cut what I'm calm. hoping. That is what I'm hoping. What's can't wait. Tell can't us about wait that. for can't wait to play Mega Mam. Sure, that's around doing, the corner. Are, are they doing a new like are you joking now or are they doing a new gender bet uh, Mega Man? There was like a 12 point thing that came out a week ago about how they localize games and pretty much admitted that they put fucking real world bullshit before an accurate translation which is the stupidest thing yeah they're saying well we got to take dei into consideration in this translation what the hell does any of that have to do with just translating what they say to english this is so stupid so yeah capcom is is cocked which is fine i they have a backlog of shit i can play so that's the beauty with all of these games, though. I mean, uh, we, we've spoken about this before. Like, most of the games coming out... Well, not most of the games coming out. That's not correct. But most of the 
triple i a high end games are just like blockbuster movies are new installments in long since established franchises the cool thing about that is that people can in many cases go back and revisit older and more often than not far better iterations of uh, of the games now coming out like for instance yeah street fighter yeah, there's Plenty Street Fighters going back third more than thirty years. Yeah, I still play. Uh, I have the arcade one up of Marvel versus Capcom two, which has all of those verse fighters on it. I play that. I every other day, just about. It's right next yeah. to where I'm sitting right now. Exactly, exactly. So I just hope that uh, that gamers increasingly will do that. Go back and revisit older games that you didn't try because chances are they're gonna be better than the than the new ones gameplay wise certainly story wise and assuming that we're talking uh, playstation 3 era they're even gonna compete graphics wise because some of the games from 15 years ago look better than the newest ones coming out right now don't they yeah which you wouldn't think was the case, but uh, but it is. I mean, it doesn't help if the game is 4K or even 8K, if it looks like shit. And a 1080p game for PlayStation 3, all in all, looks sharper and better. Yeah, I really want to get a backwards compatible PS3, specifically the 60 gig one, because that one actually has, I think ps2 hardware in it yeah it does so it doesn't the very emulate. very first one that came out that was the yeah, they're very first sought one. after now yeah yeah i really want you can get melanie mac posted one she said she got it for like 200 something bucks which exactly. oh, that was a steal yeah that was, was a steal I yeah that for i want to get a 60 gig ps3 that's backwards compatible and go back and especially play some ps2 games because then it would look good on my tv of course and all you have to do is also of course upgrade the hard drive you can upgrade to up to one gig regardless of, oh yeah uh, yeah of, or no no not one gig but one terabyte yeah you can throw upgrade that in there. up to one terabyte of course you have bigger hard drives but but the, the, the that's the problem with uh with the with the hardware in it uh, even if you put in for instance a two or three terabyte hard drive because they exist now it can't use more than one terabyte of the hard drive space. So that's the maximum you can use on the PlayStation 3. I found that out when I tried to update to a two terabyte drive. Yeah, I'd really like to, because I've been playing Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and uh, having a lot of fun with that because they gave it a next gen update. So, I mean, it looks really good in performance mode. It's making me want to go back and play all those PS2 Dragon Ball games, which there's a, there's a shit ton of. I yeah. want to go back and play all of those. Yeah, I mean, there's enough games to keep you entertained. Let's put it that way. There's no reason to to support these these games that have been ruined by third party TEI companies. I mean, the moment there's a whiff of them, there's no need to waste your money. Go and check out any of the countless games where that didn't happen, which are just great games in their own right, undisturbed by anything else. I'd really like to go back and play some old PS1 RPGs too. Like, I mean, that system was a RPG machine. So, it'd be uh, great to play one... those on my on my new TV. You know, like uh, I I think they'd probably look pretty damn good upscaled because I think it did upscale those PS1 games. Well, the PlayStation Three would, yeah, yeah, uh, and any PlayStation One game works on any PlayStation Three, any model. Yeah, but I want to play the second. I but I would say though that those games they were never meant to be played on a big screen, so I don't know how good they're gonna look. You'd be better with the. I'm gonna let screen, you. But... I'm gonna let you know <laughs> when I find out. Yeah, because <laughs> certainly what, what what I know it because like the the first console that was like made to be seen on a big screen, PlayStation Two. Oh yeah, you know, speaking of the PS2, what would be fun too is to go back and play some of those Bond games that came out on it. Do you remember? Oh those? yeah, for sure. You can't those will never be really re-released, which sucks. No, no, never, never. I'd love that, to remember Agent Under Fire. Yeah, I have it. 
man, that game was great. I'd love yeah. to go back and play some of those. And that's what I want to do. Get back into old games. Yeah. No, X, I do, do, and I hope that many more people do, because honestly, I feel that right now, on the whole, because of where we are right now in history and the influences that that is affecting TV, movies, and video games alike, maybe there's going to come a time in the future where games and movies and TV series are going to be better again, but right now, we are at a creative slump, an artificially induced slump, where stuff really were better in the not too distant past. And you'd honestly be better off redis rediscovering an old classic in a hidden gem than waiting for the next AAA release. You'd be better off with yesteryear's AAA release than tomorrow's AAA release or today's AAA release. So yeah, go for it. But I would say though that for PlayStation 1, you'd probably be much better off playing it on a smaller screen because that early polygon graphics it was rough by modern standards because that was brand new technology at the time they hadn't mastered it they would master it much much more for the playstation 2 era because this i remember from the time because i was there well a lot of playstation the... 2 was built as this you can play on a big screen well a lot of the rpgs i want to play are like sprites and stuff so that should probably those hold up pretty well actually uh yeah like pixel art does hold up incredibly well so we'll see yeah well do keep me posted about it but like for instance i, re I remember that that uh 16 bit games for that the recommendation was looks absolute best on the 14 inch screen you can play on bigger, but 14 inch was the recommendation there. And of course, a little bit bigger on the PlayStation 1, but it wasn't like until PlayStation 2 when it was like, oh, this you play on the biggest screen you possibly can get. Yeah. But uh, yeah, do let me, do let, uh, let us know. Uh, moving on with the more recent Super Chats before we go back to, to the top. That Park Place sent us $10 saying, just a quick uh, Tom appreciation and Andre happy birthday post. I hope you guys are having a great time getting ready for the weekend. Oh, thank you, that Park Place. And uh, keep up the great work. Uh, London, 19567, says for $5. I blame that lady that worked at Disneyland. The one with the beard, Heinerscheid. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everything is, that, is highly decided right WDW now. Is that WDW Pro or John Trent? Uh, for, who's behind that park place, you mean? Um, yeah. I don't it's know. It's not WDW Pro because he sent another one. Could be Jonas. I'm just going to say it might be Jonas. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could be wrong, but I would imagine it's probably Jonas who is, uh, who is uh, behind the name right there. And uh, T Neil eighty nine, uh, he uh, echoes the mentality, saying, "Be me and validate me for your evil." Yeah, that's what's going on with Pokemon right now, pretty much. Uh, we got a member chat from uh, Doctor Kocho Dragon who says, "Regarding Pokemon Go, it's now become a pay to win game now because of some of the changes they made. I used to play a lot, but uh, not now, not so much because of that." Yeah, so here's another reason then to, to not uh, play it. Uh, and uh, Magician Sapphire says for $5, credit to Raging Golden Eagle for calling out Capcom's BS years ago. Uh, Yellow Flash, are you familiar with Raging Golden Eagle? Yeah, I used to stream with him. Yeah. Okay, cool. Very cool. Not someone that I can claim familiarity with, but uh, yeah, cool. Uh, kudos to anyone for for calling out stuff uh, early. Yeah, he's all over the anime stuff. Uh, oh, that probably explains this one. Chaos Sonic says you guys really got to invite RGE someday. That's probably this raging golden. I've had uh, him on me before. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah, but I have him on one of these days. But, yeah, it's been a while sure. since I've talked to him, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, then, Tom, can you bring up uh, the Sega-related news that came out in the last couple of days here? Oh, hear what Yellow Flash has to say about that as well. Uh, and uh, while you find, uh, find that, uh, let's do, do this one in the meantime. 
My Magician Sapphire says for $5, emulators are a gamer's best friend. Get some emulators, a PC, and a Steam Deck. You're right for life. Yes, I think that's what many people should be doing right now. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having an emulator. There's something wrong with having a ROM, of course. That's not technically legal. You really have to Nintendo hates them. protect yourself if you're going to do something like that, you know, mm -hmm. with like some surf. Comedy Central. Yeah. yeah. What? So here we go. We've got Golden Axe animated series announced by Comedy Central. Who the fuck wants Didn't they this? already kind of try this already with a comedy kind of He-Man take kind of thing with that show yeah. on Fox? Thundar thingy or whatever hell I don't yeah. know how it's called. Because this is what brings it on. HyperGyber2 sent in his member chat saying, Happy belated birthday, boss man. How are you feeling about that Golden Axe series that's been announced? Yeah, and as a long time viewers know, I'm a big fan of uh, Golden Axe. And uh, it's a complete and total Conan ripoff. And uh, until we get a proper Conan series, I'd take me a proper Golden Axe series. Because if done right, this has always been my edge. If done right. A Golden Axe series can be something truly, truly special. And I also said that I think that an official announcement of Golden Axe coming is a matter of time. And indeed, here we are. Golden Axe animated series announced by Comedy Central. Okay, I, I'd take me an animate. I'd prefer a live-action Golden Axe series, but I'll take an animated series if need be, as long as it's done proper, as long as it's done something visually looking like uh, like um, uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation and tonally closer to the Castlevania series, then that might be okay. But it's going to Comedy Central, on the other hand. That's a different story right away. Uh, it says here, the new Golden Axe animated series will run for 10 episodes and is produced by CBS Studios. Oh, fantastic. In association with Sony Pictures Television and Original Film. Mike McMahon from Star Trek Lower Decks. And Joe Chandler from American oh. Dad. <laughs> The first episodes and will executive produce the series with Chandler, that's American Dad Guy, serving as showrunner. I think those sound effects basically said it all. So instead yeah. of getting getting sword and sorcery done right. Oh, God. Yeah, there's the like AI. We are getting, we're jumping straight into parody. We are jumping straight into parody, and they're making a parody of the genre before the genre, genre has seen even one modern day decent adaptation. This is a freaking joke. I mean, I'd rather not have it than have this yellow flash. I don't know how big a fan of you are in, of Golden Axe. I'm guessing not very big. But I just like seeing play. who's I've, making it. I pl I've played them. I'm not a huge, like, they're not my favorite side-scroller beat-em-ups, but, you know, the last thing I would expect is a, like, I don't want a lower decks <laughs> inspired version of this. Does this anybody? Is the last thing I would Who want. Who is this, this for? Yeah, well, I would imagine that it's the, for the same people that uh, Star Trek, uh, lower decks is for meaning imaginary modern audience yeah no one's gonna watch this yeah so who do you think is going to be race and gender bent of uh of the characters here oh, the guy in the middle yeah he's only blonde in the in that particular image uh in the game itself he's a total conan rip up with the, with black hair uh, and the woman who's a red sonia rip off she's kind of a ginger so and since she's a red-haired woman, woman, how much you want to bet that she'll be made black? Can't have a ginger woman. Oh yeah, well that's code already. With she's got red hair, it means she's actually black. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna clip this because I would not be surprised if, if, when 
when a black woman turns out to be this barbarian woman here. And then, of course, you have uh, you have the dwarf character, Julius G. Thunderhead or something like that. I don't recall his actual game name, who is a dwarf. Isn't that horribly problematic now? Didn't... Uh, didn't uh, that that dude from Game of Thrones see to it that Hollywood doesn't want to cast dwarfs anymore? What are you going to do with him? Make him a dirty, filthy hillbilly like Disney tried to do first with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Or are they going to make it a CGI monstrosity like they did in version 2 Oh, Oh, they'll, you know what they'll do is they'll just use CGI, yeah. Just like they're doing in that Snow White movie. Well, of course, it's animated yeah. the whole thing. So, and so instead of getting real dwarves, we'll just CGI it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. This is. I, I mean, these are like horrible. Like, I'm very glad that uh, that this news was countered by the Fallout season two announcement because otherwise, this would have been really depressive. I've been wanting Golden Axe for what thirty years. And then we get it, and it's from the asshole that gave us Star Trek Lower Decks. I never watched one Lower episode Decks. of that was even remotely funny. So yeah, disappointing. Yeah, I don't have much faith in this at all. I. Like I said, we already kind of had this with that. I can't remember the name of it, but there was that show that was on Fox short lived like just before things went completely woke. And I thought it was semi decent, but it was just kind of like, you know, it was making fun of shows like Sundar and He-Man and all that stuff. It was basically that kind of a character, you know, raising a kid and I think he's divorced and all that kind of stuff. It was, it was all right. But yeah. like, so that's what I can kind of figure this is going to be right. It's just going to be, but this is gonna be Korgot of Barbaria, only SJW and infinitely much worse. For for those yeah. longtime fans out there who know Korgot, which was a a pretty brilliant Conan parody that only lasted for the pilot and never went to series, but it was pretty fun. And we got a, a super chat on this from Chaos Sonic One, who said for ten dollars. The Golden Axe series, I'm really worried as it's a comedy, which is not a good sign, especially on an action series. So expect incompetent Death Adder, that's the villain, and Axe Battler, and feminist Titus Flair. Yeah, who's different? Yeah, they'll probably make her gay as well. I mean, how could they not? How could they not? So yeah, this is the this is the pressing stuff, and uh, Chaos Sonic also follows up with Lower Decks and American Dad. Yeah, Rick and Morty trash. This is doomed. Now there's like some yeah. good moments in American Dads, but I wouldn't yeah. want it to influence Golden. It's Axe not in this, any way, right? Yeah, form. yeah, it's not the same thing. Yeah, no, no, very far from it. Correct. Yeah. Then we've got, uh, where are you at here on the Super Chats? I don't know where you left uh, Yeah, I'm removing the ones that I, that I have read already. And on the uh, uh, older games, uh, Devin Watson says for two Canadian, I'm geeking out playing EverQuest. Oh, yeah. I played a little bit of that. Yeah, good choice. Good choice. That's how, how, you, how you do. Uh, and uh, Chaos uh, Sonic One also says uh, they're getting exposed. As Grumps point out, it took them two years for Capcom. So they're now getting exposed to people. Not yeah, we actually did get this one. Uh, so um, yeah, it's depressing what's going on in the state of entertainment. And this one, yeah, it. Uh, this is it probably is. the truth. David Fitzsimmons says Tom's crickets are likely like the lion roar used in. Use is a little lion blended with tiger manufactured to sound better than the real thing. Most likely, yeah, this is some sort of it's probably not even real crickets. But what yellow flash has there sounds like somebody on a rickety old rusty swing going real fast. Like, I don't know what the <laughs> hell that is, yeah, or a like tricycle in need of oil. 
I'd yeah, just there like you to go. Play it when like Lofty yeah. was like going on his yeah, I know. I should try and send you this one though. This one's much more easier on the ears. Yeah, and then just wait until for Yellow Flash to get a copyright strike for it. He <laughs> won't. I'll just write him an AI song and he'll get over it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So with that, what else we got here on the uh, super chats? We got Glade Ribbon at the top here. It says mystery box sci-fi. Too often ends up finding out that Schrodinger's cat has been dead the whole time. Kind of like the Sixth Sense. Yeah, it worked for that one. It's been a cliche ever since. And even then, it was kind of a cliche. Yeah. But uh, we got Grand Wazoo forty two sends in five euros and says, "Happy birthday, Andre! Let's keep the lights on." Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Well, let's do that. Cake. Working in the dark sucks. <laughs> yeah. As I learned earlier, Jesus Davila gifted a membership. Thank you for that, Jesus. And then Grand was Zoo 42 gifted 10 memberships. Holy crap, holy. Thank you for that. I hope to have a uh, member stream here this weekend, I think is the plan. But yeah, well, maybe we'll do a birthday stream too. So we'll see how we yeah. can juggle the two. Yeah. Tomok sends in 20 and says, as Liberty Prime once said, uh, death is preferable to communism, whatever that might mean coming from an 80 foot tall robot. Oh, well. That's true. That, that's when that's when you know Transformers is a pure commercial product when they say stuff like that. I'm still offended. Here we are, like ten Transformer movies deep, and we still haven't had Optimus Pride. What is wrong with these peoples? Never understand. They're 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 bigots. Optimus Pride out. Optimus Pride is mad. He still hasn't been in a Transformer movie. Liberty yeah, Prime. And, uh, is your from voice Fallout. box is still on. That's oh, from well. Fallout. Uh, for Prime. an eighty-foot tall robot. Oh, he's, okay. He's, he's tall. Same difference, though. Yeah. What do you think about uh, Fallout? Because I freaking loved it. Yeah, Never I liked it, it too. You liked it's, it. Also. It's the best thing I've seen on TV for years. So I'm very happy that season two got announced yesterday. That was a very cool birthday present from Amazon right there. I did not like, did not have any expectations from them, but they uh, they delivered. So uh, that's cool. Uh, and uh, Twilight uh, Hope says, "Happy birthday, Andre! Uh, have health, fortune, luck, and joy. Let negativity pass you through. Hope your dreams come true." Oh, that rhyme! Thank you so much, Twilight Hope. Uh, Tineal89 uh, on the positive note says, happy one day closer to death, Andre. Yeah, it eventually comes to us all, so thanks for that. And uh, SGT Point Blank says for $2, Elder Scrolls Online isn't Microsoft now, is it? I wouldn't know. Is it Yellow Flash? No idea, is it? Uh, it, Well, they own everything from Bethesda now, so it should it technically is microsoft's oh fantastic fantastic uh and action com uh says for five dollars tom jazzans he's getting in touch with his inner philip DeFranco. happy birthday andre oh thank <laughs> you uh and uh, tineal 89 says not strictly relevant but i'd be curious to hear about andre's take on laddie thinks meltdown on the BlackRock earnings call. Seems to bode well. Yellow Flash, did you hear about this? Yeah, they lost a lot of money, but it's a drop in the bucket to how much they have. Exactly. That is the problem. Uh, because it's very easy to talk about they that they lost so and so many billions. They did. That's an annoyance, which, uh, which Laddie Fink isn't happy about. Unfortunately, it is a drop in the bucket compared to all of the money that they actually have. And they're getting more and more. I mean, they manage trillions. So what if they lose a few billion? That's literally pocket change for them, unfortunately. Uh, so I will be doing uh, more updates on that, but I wouldn't take his meltdown as like too big uh, a sign in and of its own. He's what I, what I, well, the real thing that I loved about that was uh, how they're like people are getting misinformed and uh, they're misinformed and they're 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 believing lies when all anybody's doing are playing and talking about shit that they've said, like that interview where they talk about forcing change yep. 
So, you know, they're just getting what's coming to them. Remember, uh, disinformation and uh, and lies are co-words for the absolute truth that they do not want you to know. Yep. And uh, that's the that's the actual reality of that. Tenille eighty nine says bummer about something. Not entirely sure what it was. Uh, but uh, in in terms of uh, movies and triumphs like Shang Chi, a tipping bond says the only triumphs I endorse are for me to poop on. So thanks for that, a tipping bond. Uh, and Pilgrim Media points out: Have you noticed they don't mention AIDS anymore? I do believe there was some kind of comedian out there who at some point said that they're never going to treat it or do anything or try to cure it or do anything else because they found a good way of uh, of uh, creating uh, creating drugs that uh, will keep you or that will keep it in check and keep you paying for the rest of your life according to this comedian that's a state of affairs that the pharmaceutical industry doesn't necessarily have any motivation to change anything with. I heard someone say, I don't know the truth about it. Uh, so, yeah, any other thoughts on that? That's not going to get us uh, in hot water with YouTube? No, because my thoughts on it would get you in hot water on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we'll just stick with what that comedian once said. And of course, we distance yeah, ourselves if... because because we we must we must of course trust our overlord Fauci. He's done amazing on this stuff. I mean, they did this whole movie, Dallas Buyers Club, an amazing movie. You should check it out. He's a vin villain of that movie, actually. Uh, so, uh, well, yeah. and his South Park taught us all you got to do is just inject a bunch of money. Yeah, and that's all it takes. Yeah. Uh, and I think injections. you said it best, Andre. That yeah, yeah, as we all knew, they would always find. Well, I didn't a way say first. anything. It was a comedian who said it, and uh, no, I know. But you were, yeah. as you were pointing out, he uh, was spreading all that fake news. Basically, you know? they'll find a way for you to live with it, and not actually cure it. Yeah, yeah. All all that fake news and lies, the same kind of stuff that BlackRock offends to uh, objects to that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, my birthday is on Monday. Well, happy birthday! Well, happy birthday, Monday. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you'll have to you'll have to remind us on Monday. Maybe uh, Fat yeah. Tom will show up then. Uh, and uh, uh, Nicholas uh, Horton uh, just has been a member for three months, and he presumably upgraded because he became yeah. a new member as well. Uh, yeah. So yeah, fantastic and congrats. Uh, and uh, let's see, we we already got that one there. Pilgrim Media says for two dollars, some of the ectochrome film the seventies was horrible. That's very technical for me, but Tom, maybe you yeah, yeah. Well, films. yeah, not all film stock is created equally. That's true. But we had gotten to a point where we had pretty, pretty well perfected it. Like you look at nineties films on on a four K release, they look amazing. I was just gonna. I know what you're talking about, probably or not in detail, but I think I know the outcome. A movie from the '60s in 4K that's been remastered right and put out in 4K looks a whole hell of a lot better than anything from the '70s and anything from the '80s. It depends on the film, but you're kind of correct, Andre. Like, it depends on the film stock because yeah. there came a lot more film stocks available. You're correct. You're, you're basically on the right path. Yeah. Throughout the seventies and eighties, they had m many more varied types to use. And you had, um, not just, uh, the, the professional market, but you also had the consumer market coming in with like super eight and 16 millimeter was becoming a little bit more affordable. So then you had, you know, for instance, like Texas chainsaw massacre, um, from Toby Hooper that was shot on 16 millimeter and stuff like that. So there was that shot 35. I can't remember now. But I know Basket Case for sure was, and that was late 70s, early 80s. But yes, you have that. Plus, there was some, I think Eastman and some other companies had some really shit stock for a while that some of those movies don't look the best. But again, if as long as they're scanned properly and they don't manipulate the hell out of them, anything on film is going to look 10 times better than anything still shot on digital at this point, unless you're shooting at some super high rate 
like 16 K or eight K or something like that. I don't know. But even then that's where they say basically mathematically that you might get close enough to what, what film can actually capture capture, especially when you get to like 70 millimeter film or 65 millimeter film, which is very high, high end stuff. But yeah. I was only going to show you how to drive P4 and you only mucked with it by trying to do more. Uh, yeah. Well, T Neil uh, 89 says, Tom, I think it's the depth. The depth shows better on film. Yeah. And it's just the way it light captures. It, it's different. I mean, look at the, I mean, the way that they have to light a film compared when they're shooting with film compared to what they shoot with digital video now is completely You can, in most cases, shoot with natural light on, on digital video. So that, alone tells you that it's capturing light differently so it's going to also pump it out differently and to me digital just has this weird kind of dingy feel to it i don't i can't quite put my finger on it but film just feels alive or vibrant or colorful more lifelike i, I can't quite understand uh, how to articulate it but yeah i don't think anyone can because it's yeah. a pure uh pure, it's kind of a uh, thing yeah quality kind of thing that you can't quantify Chris K, I've uh, been a member for 10 months, saying Dimmu Borgir, Interdimensional Summit, is excellent black metal. Yeah, uh, Dimmu Borgir is pretty um, pretty darn good where black metal is concerned. Uh, interesting thing, the pioneers of Norwegian black metal, all of those second, uh, second wave people, generally don't like Dimmu Borgir because it's everything they were against. But hey, that's the commercialization of what used to be true cult for you right there and uh Timu Borgir were the first to be truly commercial I mean even in Norway the country where where everyone was freaked out over the satanic panic I'm have a video coming about so I'm doing a deep dive into this right now where all the media really run crazy with how dangerous and how horrible this stuff was a couple of years later Dimu Borgir is on national tv playing with the with the National Orchestra. So, yeah. Uh, Alex Ashkan also says, Borgir is the kiss of black metal. Yeah, that can be can be uh, uh, right, but black metal is mm -hmm. generally not about pussing is the issue with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Vengeful Dragon, uh, garlic bread expert, says for 35 South African rounds, Disney Plus missed an opportunity to not put Shogun into cinemas, as a five-part film series this summer. Yeah. Angel, well, this was the chosen final season. Yeah, and, and it all depends on their contracts. That's the thing, because I'm sure that there was a lot of studios that were pretty pissed that they, you know, had they known th certain things were going to go certain ways, they probably would have put in certain stipulations and things to where they probably could have done some more things like this. Because uh, my understanding, this is part of what gets in the way of, like, say, the, the, the Snyder Cut being shown in theaters uh as opposed to like a private screening and that's why zach had to pull it that way uh, among other things but uh yeah it, it may have had something to do with that because i know they can get away with certain things like showing like one episode in theaters or a couple episodes in theaters but i agree vengeful dragon like there was a lot of opportunities that were probably missed this year because they didn't have the, the product to put out and then they crammed everything into march here and now here we're going to be waiting. I mean, that un, uh, the warfare of ungentlemanly, whatever the hell it's called, thing comes out this week, and that might do okay. And uh, that, that movie, that. the Civil War movie did okay last week, but I think that's going to fall off a cliff. Red um, Dawn in a van with journalists. That's basically what I've heard, yeah. And it basically makes the journalists sound like they're the most important thing in the world. But any, that anyway. Movie, that movie sucks. That's what I've heard, yeah. Um, no, I think it's a really missed opportunity. And a lot of these streaming things that they've been doing why are they not putting them in theaters it makes no sense i just watched uh the the marky mark movie we talked a little bit about the other day the the the, the family plan one what about a perfect film to put in theaters we haven't had a decent comedy in theaters in years years and i think it would have done very well but apple's not interested in that see that's part of the problem too they're more interested in bringing in new subscribers um, if they feel like it's going to be more beneficial to them to do it that way, then they, they got the money to burn to do that. The rest of these streaming services don't. So, uh, yeah, eventual dragon, what Paul was saying earlier, I, I wouldn't see stuff being pushed to cinemas being more common, but I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more Yellowstone type moves where they take a lot of these streaming shows and they start putting them on their networks and stuff like that, that I can see. 
Um, and I, I believe Shogun is already showing on FX at the same time as it's on Disney Plus, if I'm not mistaken. So they kind of already have that kind of filled on that end. But uh, yeah, Angel's also a very independent studio on their own. So they can do a lot of different things that other studios probably can't get away with as much. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that, but uh, that's my understanding. It's probably mostly contractual at the end of the day. Uh, speaking of that, I, I sent you a free ticket to the Young Gentleman movie. Oh, well, thank you, because I don't have to have drive so far to see it. It's not showing in town here, and I was like, oh, that's one I might be able to just catch in town, but yeah. Uh, Action Com says, if I showed up at Midnight's Edge meeting with a Super 8 camera and I converted the film to into a YouTube video, would you be excited? Fuck yes. Duh. <laughs> well, it depends uh, on I, what we're doing at the time. It's well, that's true. <laughs> I mean, Paul would probably just be like, wait, 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 let me take my clothes off. <laughs> Uh, Hypergyver2 says, Happy belated birthday, boss man. How are you feeling about the Gold Next series that's been announced? I think we grabbed that one already, but it, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, not too excited, by which I mean not at all. Yeah, I'd rather Jeff's, it didn't exist. Jeff C says, For Andre's gl- Glima lessons taught by Lars Magnar Enoxen, because every Viking needs to master Glima. Am I saying that right? Glima, yeah, not Glima. Uh, Glima mm-hmm. is uh, that's uh, kind of like the Viking martial art, it's like Nordic wrestling. Oh, and oh. Uh, Lars uh, Mangenar Enoksen is um, uh, half Norwegian, half Swede folklorist and uh, Glima master. Do they have nunchucks? No, oh. happy birthday, he says as well. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks so much for that. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be cooler if they did. I'm just saying. Uh, Latino Slan is here. Hey, Polly. He says, Lefiz, Feliz Capriano's Efe Salud Dinero y, y Amor. Did yeah, I say that right? Means, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Salud Dinero y Amor, which means hey, close. health, money, and love. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yes, please to all of them. That, Check out Latino Slant, of course. And then we got Packing Protons here. How you doing, buddy? It says, Happy birthday, Andre. I hope, to, I hope you celebrate what is best in life, which is. To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of their women, or the or rather the lamentation of the taxman, as Psst. I use every loophole available. Fuck the taxman, yes, fuck the taxman. Even the Beatles knew. <laughs> Carlos Alfredo Lopez says, "Happy birthday, Andre. What is best in life?" Well, he just said that, but hail to myself and Yellow Flash. Thank you for that, Carlos. Uh, we appreciate that. Indeed. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, and I just want to say I caught your Muslim uncle doing the uh, uh, Freddy's Dead. Uh, I caught your reference there, so I'm going to use it now. Nice hearing from you, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Jesus Davila sends in 30 bucks, and that's a very generous super chat, Jesus. Thank you. Then you also Thanks. gifted memberships and stuff today, too, I believe. So thank you. Uh, it says, happy birthday, Andre. Have a drink on me. Well, that's a almost a bottle. Hey Zeus. That's right. Why do you keep calling me Hey Zeus? Do I look Puerto Rican to you? I shove a that guy call you Hey Zeus, motherfucker. It's Zeus, as in the father of Apollo. <laughs> shove a lightning bolt up your ass, Zeus. Uh, e Clay Thomason says, "Are you really having cricket measuring?" Yes, we are. <laughs> it's just it's an it's grating on my ears. That's also I got to give him shit for it. Dr. Jones sends a 999 and says, Happy birthday, Andre. Thank you for your support. Uh, videos coming soon. Keep your keep. I think it means keep, keep up, the, keep good up work. the good work. Yeah. From Dr. Jones and the investigative examiners. Yes. Well, oh, thank you. Is that the, the investigative excellent. examiner? Yeah. Yes, that's the investigative examiner. That on the, on in a museum. Doing amazing, amazing stuff Indeed. there. Yes. Yes. We've been in contact with him, so yeah. Yeah. Tanil sends in a super chat for two and says, Every landslide starts with the first falling pebble. Indeed. It does indeed. It's very poignant. Jason Webster is in the house. How you doing, Jason? Sends in an Australian 10 and says, I have really enjoyed Shogun. I've heard a lot of good things. I want to get to it. Hirioka Sonata is great as Tor- Torana- Toranga uh, and the production design exquisite. I agree. Missed opportunity not to have had a theatrical version in cinemas. Yeah. Probably yeah, works well, better as a show. Yeah, it's a long story. And I mean, I've heard they've com- cre- compressed a lot of stuff already. I'm on the fourth episode now. I, I've been taking, I took a one piece break this week. So I've been 
I caught up on Fallout. Can't be that much farther from getting to the end of that at this point. Uh, just a couple hundred more episodes. Oh my god! How long yeah. are those episodes? Mm, Twenty. Uh, not that long, actually, because they spend fucking seven minutes playing a song and like so one minute intro, one minute something intro, and then like four to five minutes repeating the previous episode. So you know, you just skip past that. Each episode's really only like fourteen minutes. <laughs> When you right consider, that's what i was thinking like yeah. because if you have a hundred episodes better not be more than 15 minute episodes yeah because when you consider the intro the outro and recap uh, recap they're not that long yeah yeah well that's kind of the crap we'd run into with like disney all the time is like when they add all that other stuff into it like the mandalorian it's like huh you got like 20 minutes a show if we're lucky <laughs> like yeah, yeah, I wanted to take a little break because I just went. I got. I just finished a really long arc, so just taking yeah. a. I I might not watch any next week either. Holy crap! Holy, dear on. Thank you so much for the fifty euros. Yes, thank you, and for which it says "Joyeux anniversaire, Andre." Uh, and of course, that was me butchering French there. But uh, merci beaucoup, uh, mon ami. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And then uh, Ace uh, 1589 2001 also adds for two. Forgot to say happy birthday, Andre. Oh, well, you did not. Birthday. You managed to remember. Know. Yesterday yeah. it was. Yep. We're hoping to have uh, some sort of uh, actual party here soon. But uh, yeah, well, we may have to try to do that back to back with membership stream. Uh, yeah. If my week, uh, the weekend is so uh, looking the way that it looks. So, so yeah. But just, just stay tuned and we should know. Maybe we'll try to do something on Sunday. All right, with that, we are caught up. Fantastic. All right, with that, yeah, Yellow Flash, thanks for joining today. It's a pleasure yeah. to have you as always. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, of course, I'll try to join you tomorrow night on Flashcast, which is every Saturday about 9.30 Central. Uh, yeah, anything got, else you want to plug? Yeah, we got Archcast and Quarter Black Garrett coming on tomorrow. Oh, nice. Going nice. cool. to go hard on Warhammer. So Yeah. Oh, there you go. That'll be brilliant. That's his way of saying you don't have to show up, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have uh, the true no, know, representation anyway so yeah, yeah. Uh, glad to hear that that's right Arch has been here a few times so it'll be cool to see him over there um so yeah other than that i'm sure we have some projects that'll pop up sooner or later been dropping some ai songs over on the mead side of things so check the, the, those out if you haven't already they have been a lot of fun and people seem to be enjoying them uh, anything else i'm forgetting andre uh, I don't think so. So everyone, be sure to to check out uh, After Dark. Check out Midnight's Edge live archives, and of course, check out Midnight's Edge Espanol. Be sure to check out over the course of the weekend, because yeah, I'm sure that we'll have uh, some video dropping or in member chat as well. We definitely, probably do a member stream or birthday stream for sure. Yeah, indeed. All right. And with that, it is time for some koalas in the rain. Koalas in the rain, koalas in the rain, no fucks given, koala, koala, koalas in the rain, koalas in the rain, no fucks given.